Tigers mean business this year. They've been so impressive. Half their games, they've kicked 100 plus. They've been the front runners in the box seat all year. And it's a beautiful kicking style from the veteran. Big winners, the base, 75 points over West Adelaide. They've locked up the minor premiership. They're going to head into September with some serious momentum. The qualifying final between Port Adelaide and the Crows. From 55 points, good cup, absolute ripper. Kenzie was there, fell to the ground. Stengel is there, looking dangerous. This man knows how to kick a goal. Sam Mays. Good tackle, Mark Fred. 30 metres out. This time, they get around him. Topic Cox, the bouncers help him out. Likes it off the boot as well. How about that? Jordan Boyle. The well, guys now enjoy a 30-point lead. They're through to the second semi-final here. Here's the Port Adelaide Football Club. They are in great nick too. They got over the Crows last week in the qualifying final by 30 points up to qualify for this clash against the Bays who have been fantastic. Have a look at that recent form. Tim Ginnivar, Port Adelaide legend, seven-time premiership star, joins me. There's a lot of green there for Port Adelaide, Timmy. They've been fantastic. In fact, that game against Glenelg that they lost in round 14 is the only loss they've had since May. Yeah, and look, I was at that game and they kept Port Adelaide goalless in mm. the first half. It was quite a performance by especially the midfield of the base. So they'd want to try and repeat something like that today. Well, the base, <laughs> minor premiers, and look, they have been just a fantastic team all year. You can see the draw there. They've actually had a couple of draws, but the games they've lost, besides that third game, which really was a, a bit of a dead rubber for them, They've only lost by less than a kick, and there's two of them that they've lost this year. Well, two of those games they lost were to Sturt and Nord, no longer mm. a part of the final yep. series. So you'd have to say they are the form side going in, and they're also going to start favourite today. Absolutely. No doubt about that at all, Timmy G. And, uh, look, we love this day. We've got the four best teams left in the competition. We've just seen the Crows really make a mess of the Norwood Football Club. This game, though, there was a huge buzz about it. And Glenelg Footy Club, you've just felt that real momentum since they won those last six games from last year from Mark Stone and rolled through to this season. Absolutely. Their form's been excellent, as I said. They're the form team going mm. in. Look, this is an interesting one, the second semi, because you wait a long time yep. for it. And I think that that last three weeks for the Bays, they just couldn't wait to get to this day. Well, Matty Locken, of course, uh, is the coach of Port Adelaide, and he is with Rick Biglands right now. Matty, really appreciate your time so close to the bounce. Just come out of the rooms. How's the feeling amongst the lads with such a big game on the line? Yeah, the boys are really relaxed today. Uh, obviously, playing last week, um, we sort of knew what we are in for pre-game. And, um, yeah, well, I think we're ready to go. You uh, dominated hit-outs last week, but only just got up in clearances. How did you assess that with the video footage? Yeah, we had a good look through that. We know that Glenelg have got one of the best midfields in the comp and, um, and Jesse really competes in the ruck. So we know we need to be on in that game. That's probably when it, where it's going to be win, won and lost today. Look, the last time you played Glenelg down at Albert and they really took it up to you, is it something you've gone back and looked at or is it probably too far in the past? Yeah, no, we probably don't really go back too much over last time we played and we know we didn't score well in the first half and our second half was pretty strong. So, look, finals are a different game and um, we're ready to go. Very settled lineup as well. Strange at AJ back in there. Uh, How would you go telling Matt Appleton and missing out? Yeah, no, it was tough for the two guys to miss out. Marty Fredericks has obviously missed out as well. So, unfortunately, that's a part of job that, um, as a coach, we don't really like. All right, mate. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Here he is. Matty Lockin, of course, did coach the Glenelg Football Club for three seasons. Peter Laddams last week. Look, he was irresistible with the way he played. His agility and versatility was fantastic, but he didn't have a recognised Ruckman to go up against last week. Look, you are correct. His form is awesome, though. It can't be ignored. It's these sorts of bits of play that you're yep. seeing here now on screen that uh, have really made him come alive this season. And that's a terrific contested mark and goal. But he does have his work cut out today. He's got Jesse White, a very experienced player that he's up against today. And it is a really important clash. Yeah, no doubt about that. And Jesse White, he's a great story too, because you've got to look at it. When he came over here after being at Collingwood in Sydney, he really came as a forward, was really struggling to find his feet here at Sanford Footy. They put him into the ruck. Yep. And then when you've got such a great forward line that they did have with, uh, with Reynolds and McBean and so forth, yeah. uh, he's been sensational, Jesse White. Look, he has. And I, I, it's amazing. I, I reckon a ruckman is almost like a wicketkeeper in cricket. You're always in the game. Mm. You are always in it. You're at the action, and maybe that's yep. exactly what he needed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's head down now to John Casey with Mark Stone.
Thanks very much, Soda and Mark. Appreciate your time right now. You've been on the big stage before as an assistant coach at AFL level in grand finals multiple occasions. What's your read on your team coming into this game? How are they feeling? Yeah, they're quite relaxed, actually. Um, for a team that hasn't been in the finals for a very long time, I thought they'd be a bit jittery, but they're not. They're very in good space, really relaxed, and, and really eager to get into it. Are you happy with that mindset? Yeah, I am. I mean, the last thing I really want is a team that's really nervous and potentially could make mistakes and fall into some, some issues in the first five minutes with the, with the nerves and the adrenaline. But... I'm really happy for them. They're, they've worked hard to get to this point and they're going to make sure they enjoy it. If you could pick one thing today to get this win, what's the most important thing for your team to do well? I'll probably win the midfield battle, I think, and uh, get territory. Um, you've got to get ground position and give your forwards a chance and get the ball inside 50. And you've beaten Port the last three times you've played them and spanked them a couple of times as well. So you've got no fears about going up against this team? No fears, but we also understand that the pass counts for nothing right now and there's another game when nil all and the ball's about to be bounced. So we've got to make sure we bring our game style to life bring our effort and pressure um, and force him into error. We've excited a lot of fans down at Tiger Land. Good luck today. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. Cheers. Mark Stone, coach of the Tigers. Gee, they've had a great season. And everyone, I think they're now the second team of everyone in the competition. But, uh, well, the weather, I think the rain, we might get a little bit more of that, although bright sunshine at the moment, Biggles. Uh, this facility here, particularly the surface, is so good, so lush. So we'll see some fast football regardless of the conditions. Now let's get into the Port Adelaide side. It's an important lineup as well. They welcome back Aidan Johnson, who's a handy inclusion for the Magpies. He served that one match suspension for engaging in rough conduct with the doggy skipper Trent Goodrum in the final home and away round of the year. And Jack Strange, the former Tiger, up against his old side. He would love to have a big game today talking to Matty Loken off, off air and he said he's pretty pumped for the, for the outing. There's yeah, something about that selection, I'm sure. But so we take a look at the Glenelg lineup. They've made two changes to the team that lost by 12 points to Sturt two weeks ago. McBean, the uh, Ken Farmer medalist, come back after being rested and Matt Ubergang who was on the Fremantle Dockers list when Mark Stone was an assistant coach there comes back as well he's vital for them in defence they've got a very good lineup very settled lineup as well who do you think might win Biggles? Well, I'm actually hearing McBean has got a broken finger and wasn't rested last week even though Glenelg said it was but I think the Tigers they've won their past three meetings against the Magpies I think they'll make it four. Hard to tip against and the Tigers look irresistible at the moment Soda. Yeah good on you boys some nice mail there from Rhett Biglands and well the opening bounce coming out next a huge second semi-final it is Port Adelaide Footy Club up against the minor premier the Tigers Win it for Norden, kick to the southern end, which was a bit of a surprise. And no surprise here, Chris Curran has won the toss and is kicking to the scoreboard end, the northern end here of Adelaide Over, which appears to be favoured by a one to two goal breeze as we look at the RAA rookies and Jack Ellsworthy, an important one for the Pies. Absolutely, and uh, I'll tell you what, every ball, every contest, he loves it. He loves getting in there. He's got a lot of poise about him and played quite well last week. Let's put some good numbers up and, well, this man for Glenelg, our RAA rookie, I think uh, you'll find him in the top ten of the AFL draft a little later this year, Will Gould. He is outstanding. A lot of parallels between he and Darcy Fogarty in terms of the man-child attributes are. they have. That's exactly what they are and uh, it's, it's a good attribute to have. And if you're being compared to uh, Darcy Fogarty, well, that's not a bad thing either because uh, I think Darcy's going to have a bright future at AFL level and Will... I reckon he's looking forward to that as well. But he's got a big job today in playing well for his team. And what they want to do is go into their first grand final for a decade. Well, Timmy, if you have a look there at the uh, scoring, you've got the two most potent forward lines in the competition going head-to-head. -head. Yes, and, uh, and that's a good thing, isn't it, for uh, the entertainment of the crowd. They do like to hit the scoreboard. And Port Adelaide's defence has been terrific. But the Glenelg defence, only a goal or so behind them in their average scores that they have conceded all year it is going to be a massive clash it is the second semi-final direct path to the grand final for the winner of the maggies and the tigers here is john casey to get you through long time since these teams have played in a final 1993 wow. it was gee i played that one and the bounce well i'm surprised they didn't recall that the bays who are the best first quarter team in the competition have won 12 out of 18 they usually start strong. They look for Scott early. 
Ball over the back of the pack, though. Comes out. Here's Jared Leanett, who was so influential last week in the win against Adelaide. Oh, dropping the mark there was Hayes. Opens the door for the Tigers. And it's Will Gould, who bangs it quickly back towards Josh Scott. Had two to beat. And it's marked here by Leanett right in front of the interchange gates at the centre wing. That breeze appears to have picked up a little as well. Getting a little more blustery after we had rain pre-game ahead of semi-final number one. And it's sending Port Adelaide forward. And unable to complete the mark there. But the ball trickles out of bounds. And we will reset here. That was a good spoil. Coming from behind. And uh, attacking it really hard. It was Uber gang on Frampton. So he's got a job to do there. Marlon Motlop just with a little fumble. Partington, Snook. And here's Jesse White. High kick going forward. McBean provided a contest there. We'll keep an eye out to see how those fingers are taped. Rick Bigland said that he may have had a broken finger or a dislocated finger last week, which is the reason why he missed the game against Sturt a fortnight ago, rather. Glenelg just harassing Port Adelaide. Lean it coming through. The free kick has been found. It's going to go Magpie's way. Jared Lean it in that contest. And he, he played a very good game last week. He's a finals player and I think he enjoys it. 18 disposals and a goal last week against Adelaide. All out wide here. Scooped up there by Trengove who looks inboard. Back for Lena. And plenty of it coming up for disposal number four. Had twice as many as Glenelg so far. They've got it on their terms. This is Billy Frampton. He's going short as well. Laddams takes the mark. Looks to play on. He's back in the goal square. They're heading that direction now. Tall Timber about to approach Marshall. Oh, just came from the side and his name written all over and takes a great mark. Yeah, I thought you were going to go for the old holler for a Marshall. There was a good contest one and he just flew over the back of him and it's the sort of tricks he's got in his bag, isn't it? With Todd Marshall, he can do this sort of play and he's now got to finish and give his teammates the, the quick start they needed. I, I think early goals before any sort of weather hits are going to be pretty important. He hasn't been completely reliable in front of goal. Shouldn't miss this. Comes in from 15 out and makes no mistake. Port Adelaide draw first blood here. It took more than two and a half minutes. What a mark that is on the National Pharmacy's optical replay. What a ripper from Todd Marshall. He then finishes the job from dead in front and gets Port Adelaide their first goal. Boy from Deniliquin gets his 11th goal for the season at Sandford level as Laddams and White go at it again. Da Agnew. And this is Partington. He's also one of the favourites for the McGarry medal tomorrow night. You'll see that as a big punch goes forward. Spinning around was Mays trying to get through. McBean slaps it after the handball came to him from Motlop. Clearing kick now from defence for Port Adelaide. Came from Corcoran. Here he is, the goal kicker, Marshall. And there's a whistle from the umpire. It's going to be oh, downfield. That. That's 25. It is. 25 metres as well. That's right on to it, Timmy. Well, it's it's just a uh, pretty silly play from an experienced player in Uber game. He just needed to uh, lead that to bounce. Uh, but to punch it away when you knew the whistle had blown and they'd said downfield, that was just uh, putting, you know, Billy Frampton within range didn't have to happen. Had a tough game last week. Billy Frampton had to go head to head against Andy Otten. So he will be absolutely itching big Billy to get this one through. Start on the right note. He's kicked 32 goals for the season. He's the number one goal kicker for the Magpies and he puts it through. Well, just a couple of undisciplined acts here. One, the late hit. Put by Proud and downfield, Uber going punching the ball out of bounds for 25 metre penalty. Gives Billy Frampton his first goal and Port Adelaide two quick ones. Confident start for the Magpies as White jumps into Laddams. Ball came back to him, handball over the top, and the kick provided there by Partington. Leonard, he is everywhere at the moment, Jared Leonard. He's got some run coming off half back from Trent McKenzie, who drives up to centre half forward. Magpies out strongly. Couldn't find it though. Tobin Cox playing against his former team. Aiden Johnston thought he was tripped. Umpire said play on. Here's Tobin Cox in over the top of 
form of Glenelg team, mate. The umpire says, I'll have it. Hit through hard, though, Johnson. That's a, that's a good sign. You want your players doing that early in a final. Hayes wins the tap. Smother. Sharked. The smother was good. Sutcliffe is there. Bradley's kick went nowhere. Sutcliffe dispossessed. Bradley comes again. Close to the boundary line. Handed over to Brad Agnew, but the ball had gone over the boundary line and will bring it back here for a boundary throw-in. Six and a half minutes played. It's all Port Adelaide at the moment. Yeah, the Bays may take a bit of time to settle down. This is that week off too, which uh, I was speaking about earlier. Just sometimes you, you don't handle it as well. You, you Just that little bit off the mark. And Port Adelaide, of course, having played a final, they look like they're doing the good things early. Jesse White with a clearing kick. Oh. Garner flies out half forward. Going back towards the top of the square. Big fly from Jesse White. Brings it to the front. Tobin Cox, he had plenty of the footy last week. He looks super dangerous up forward. The kicking let him down in front of the sticks. But against his old side here, Glenelg, he is going to be a handful, Tobin Cox. We were busy last week when he just didn't kick straight. Ended up kicking 2-5, I think. Something like that from seven two, shots. And want to keep having seven shots, uh, you'll get more accurate. Short passes on to Max Proud here from Jesse White. That's centre half back. And he's looking out wide. McBean making the lead. He's charged up from full forward and takes the mark there ahead of Laddams. Yeah, they won't mind that. If he's taking marks at half back. Josh Scott at centre wing is calling for it. McBean's going to head in that direction. Good distance with the kick. And over the top of Scott. He wrestles away from Garner. Protected the ball well. And he's, he's got a free kick as well here. So yep. Josh Scott rewarded for his efforts. And Willem Drew just taking it high. And Scott a little undecided as well. The lead's on now from Darcy Bailey, but that's ignored. Going to try and get McBean involved. Went at it one-handed. Ball hits the deck. Snook did well to manufacture a kick there. Likewise, Partington high up and under. It was partially smothered. Close in the long sleeves. A suggestion of a high tackle there. Umpire not buying it, though. And he'll have a ball up as the Tigers inside their attacking 50 for just the second time. Yeah, I was going to say that. Don't want the scoreboard to blow out too much before they settle. And we saw that in the first semi-final with Adelaide kicking the first six goals of the game and the Red Legs never recovered. So this is Brad McCarthy dispossessed in the tackle. Virgin, quick kick. Snook didn't go required distance. He was taken high. Free kick going the way of Matty Snook and a chance of Glenelg to open their account. Matty Snook been a terrific player for him all year. Takes the ball. And maybe it was the body hitting the head that was the free kick because it wasn't the arm. But he's got it. He's got an opportunity dead in front to be able to just get one back for the base. Not a regular goal kicker though, Timmy. Just one goal three this season. Ball. And last year kicked two goals seven for the season. Why don't you just write him off, John? Trying the reverse commentator's <laughs> curse here for Matty Snook. Glenelg need a steady art, and he it. delivers. Tigers get there first. Matty Snook coming in here, getting taken high, goes back 25 metres out. They needed the settler just to settle the nerves on their players, and he's nailed it. Kicks the goal, and I reckon that was much needed for, for the Bays now. They can just settle. Oh, Matty Snook. Great work for him to get that one through. Only Luke Partington averages more of the footy for the Bays this year. Marlon Motlop just behind them, and Marlon Motlop's got Sutcliffe, his work colleague at the Port Adelaide Football Club as his opponent at the moment. Marshall's had a good start. Terrible. Goes on the outside of the foot, though. Lets himself down. Joseph in defence. Also current little give from Tobin Cox to Sutcliffe and sees it out over the line. It was just a little hard, that handball. I just think uh, the, the little soft give would have been perfect, but he drilled it straight through Sutcliffe. The boundary throw in. Magpies lurking here at the moment. Already with two goals through Marshall and Frampton. He does the ruck work. Jesse White caught behind there. Sutcliffe had oh, it momentarily. Oh. So that's on the ball if you try and fend, I think. And one player said no prior. Mm. Lucky. Good tackle from Nicholson as he... Dragged Boyd Woodcock down. Ball up, came straight back without anyone touching it. Virgin dragged off, but will win the free kick. A little bit of feeling in this game at the moment. 
And how about the contest between Sutcliffe and Marlon Motlop going head to head here at the moment? They share an office at Port Adelaide, working in the Indigenous programs and the academy there. And Marlon Motlop, of course, playing for the Tigers, having played AFL with Port Adelaide. Here he is on cue with it. He and Sutcliffe. Very well known to one another. Had a lot of banter during the week. Right now, across the white line. So it's every man for himself. This is the captain, Chris Curran. Left halfback looks up to the wing. McBean the target. Good contest. Brought to ground by Laddams. Ball still in dispute. Laddams tries again. Nicholson, such a strong, fierce competitor. Ramps him up. Matching 100 sample games, Carl Nicholson. And good to see him back from injury. Yeah, look, he had a terrific season last year. And just been dogged a bit by injury. Good that he's back in the lineup. An important player, Nicholson, for them. And this man was important last week. Sam Mays gets a kick into attack, kicks some goals Ooh. last week. As Gould goes off the deck, just tries hold on to Frampton as well. He did that well, Gould. Now I'm it. Let's have a look young at this. Man. I don't know that Billy Frampton's wanting to do that. Because that was always going to go out. Boy from Lucendale goes up the line, and there's some strong hands there from Corcoran. He's a courageous player, Tommy Corcoran. Port Adelaide born and bred, Port Districts. Just concedes some distance to go back to Ghana. Me too, with Marlon Motlop there, and they work in the same department as well. Ghana content just to show him the ball there and try and put some pressure on him as the kick had a little too much on it for Hewitt. Snoop hits him and then asks for a free kick. Atley, strong body as it comes out to McBean. Just a little kick forward. Works out well for Andrew Bradley, the former skipper. His kick is going to the advantage of Reynolds. We know he's quick. He's a great runner. He's Rushing. done really well against Corcoran, but you're right, Tim. He rushed it. He got so much space with his speed from Corcoran. He could have actually had a crack and ran right in. Well, he absolutely had Corcoran for speed, no doubt about that. He gained five metres on him quickly, but he just grabbed the ball as if he was in a pack situation. I reckon he could have actually straightened his body and gone straight to the goal. Well, McKenzie's kicked a centre wing, high flyer there, and infringement has given away the free kick here. Jesse White, as you can see, unrealistic, not getting a hand to it against Hayes. How did they play a down lean at behind yeah, play? That was, that was uh, I think that might have been McBean just giving him a touch. And here's Laddams, who went strongly, so coming the other way, it's in Aaron Joseph. Good tackle from Frampton there as he drags down Curran. And as you can see, Laddams, the contact that he got there from Aaron Joseph was fierce. It's got him up the middle, hasn't it? That's just the old sternum. Body on the line stuff, and Laddams is still trying yeah, to... He's struggling. Woodcock thought he was taken high there in a tackle by Brad McCarthy. Umpire didn't see it that way. And Woodcock appealing for a free kick. Laddams now appears to be back with us. Frampton went to ruck work, missed it completely. Strong tackle, though. And what an arm wrestle this is developing into. No one prepared to give an inch here. Almost 15 minutes played here in the opening quarter. Port Adelaide with the first two goals of the game. Glenelg with the next. And out the back, Bradley. Read it well. Good smother. That was good work on that occasion by Atley. And the kick around the bike, top of the square. Glenelg well positioned here. Couldn't complete the mark there. Was Uber Gang. He made another error. And Max Proud wrapped up in a strong tackle by Mays. But a free kick is going. They're coming back. Coming back, back to there. give Glenelg a free kick. And it's Curran who was manhandled in the goal square. It was held, held up well there. There's a real presence around Aaron Joseph down here at ground level. He's bashing into everyone. He's got his mean face on. We saw that attack on the footy just only moments ago against Peter Adams, and he is angry right now, setting the tone for the Tigers defenders. Plenty of AFL experience for Aaron Joseph. He is a hard nut. So we're going to set the scene for Glenelg. I know they're going to get a red-hot contest against Port Adelaide. They come in after that win last week against the Crows, and they're on a great run. Port Adelaide Football Club, the way they've been going at Sandford level is Sharon Berg, hacks it forward. Off the deck is Josh Scott. Great to see him back after he had that broken arm earlier in the year in round three. And then just had a little chip on the bone where the plate was. Terrific smother. Sutcliffe had the kick. Scott getting down and dirty. Sharon Berg tries to shoot a handball out to Agnew, but Hewitt isn't going to let him out at all. Well, this is certainly a more contested game than we saw in the first final. They're in close. They're smothers off the boot. 
Three to Port, one to the Bay. So they're doing all the one percenters. Big prize on the line here. Spot in the grand final. Sutcliffe wobbles one forward. Laddams did well in the contest. It's got Woodcock at close quarters. Atley once more. His kick. And he got it out to the advantage of Tobin Cox. But Joseph was right there with him. And Nicholson. In fact, no. Wrestled off it there. It was Andrew Bradley. He win the free kick. Just uh, impinged his run. Oh, blood rule. Blood rule so coming off Gregson. I think it might be Mays. Here. I think, I think it might be Mays that's got the uh, blood rule call against him. He's not in a hurry anyway. Oh, taking his time, just walking to the bench. Not a lot of blood on Sam Mays, but what about the smother on the outer side? That is really going to test out Josh Scott's arm. He dove across the foot, he fell on it heavily and got up straight away. Great news. Here he is at this contest. Didn't hit it hard. Wrapped up in a strong tackle. Atley going nowhere. Hit over the ball there was Agnew. Came back for seconds against Willem Drew. And now it's Motlock. Hand pass for Bailey. Got Liam McBean running pass, but he's also got Scharenberg further up the oh, field. Defensive pressure was Brilliant. great from Trent McKenzie. Elite work from him. Diffuses a very dangerous situation. Glenelg were thinking goal, but now Port Adelaide have got it back and Jack Strange with it. At right half back. Looks up towards centering. Marshall arriving, crashes the pack. Crashes oh, my man. His own player has gone down. Laddams takes another hit as Bradley measures the pass, and it's a good one. And he finds Reynolds, 55 out. Lead comes now, turning around. They fire the ball in, and how about that? Liam McBean takes the mark. Yeah, Bays did that well in the end. Had to earn a couple of hard balls to do it. But uh, just see Todd Marshall coming in here and crashing into his own man. Got to pick that a bit better, Toddy. Lead up pass, beautifully done. We've seen this a few times this season. Another big one two punch, aren't they? McBean, 46 goals. Now you see the strapped left thumb and the finger as well on the right hand. And McBean, 46 goals, 19 this season to win the Ken Farmer medal. He also won the Jim Frosty Miller medal for the leading goal kicker in the VFL. He was playing with Richmond. The other time as he lights it off the boot. And Glenelga in front for the first time in the game. A nice little finish here. Luke Reynolds. That's a bit more poise there on that kick. And gets it to the lead up. Ken Farmer medalist. McBean who finishes off really nicely. 47 goals for the year for McBean. He goes into the ruck now with Jesse White having a little bit of a breather. Laddams got back up after that big crunch that came his way via Marshall with a friendly fire. So good to see him moving well. But he's taken it out of the ruck. Something we've become accustomed to with Laddams in, in the second half of the year. Really improved player as Drew's kick is perfect to Frampton. And his confidence will be up, Billy, after a tough game last week. We mentioned Andy Otten and how he did a good job on him, but already with a goal, Frampton, and from 55, he's a long kick normally, so distance shouldn't be a problem and isn't, but the accuracy is. But he'd be certainly feeling good about himself, Timmy, getting that chance to get some early touches. Yeah, absolutely, but uh, not a fan of the long point myself. One of your pet hates there, Timmy, so... Out of full back, Aaron Joseph runs his measure. Gets it up toward the wing, a little directed. Unable to complete the mark there, though, was Cam Hewitt. Most in dispute. Good hands there from Kane Farrell, his first disposal in the game. And Hewitt there again once more to wrap up the tackle. Hewitt, one of only three players in this team at Port Adelaide to play every game this year. As Sam Mays have attended to the blood and patched him up. Going to change his jumper and wear number three, we're told. Close to the boundary line. Well done, Sutcliffe, to keep that alive. And another chance for Port Adelaide going forward off the boot of Trengove. Get the ball out. And now lurking with intent. It's Davidson. Oh, dragged off it. Glenelg are fierce at it today, as they have been all season. And they scurry the ball away from their defensive 50. Here's Agnew in traffic. Stays with it, trying to paddle it to the advantage of his teammate. Davidson and Corcoran is right there. Forces a stalemate. About the strong stuff coming from Uber Gang there. Yeah, that's a good hit up the middle, isn't it? And uh, it's been like that all game so far in this first term. It's been really hardly fought. Good contest. Bays at the moment just edging port in the clearances. 
18 to 14, the tackle count in favour of the Bays as well as lean it. A great start to the game. Possession number eight goes forward. Kick the goal to get things going last week too as Sam Hayes gives it to Sutcliffe over the top. Tobin Cox under pressure from Gould just worried him out of it. Will Gould and there's Sam Mays close to the line and takes McCarthy out. There's not going to be too many easy balls and this is a real final. Uh, it's a second semi-final. Like you said, there's a lot on the line. You get to go straight into a grand final. And both teams know that, I reckon, <laughs> the way they're going about it. How about the play from Will Gould? The experience, that's why he's so highly regarded by AFL scouts. Diffused the situation. He was caught behind his man and still able to come up with the get for Flanel. Close to the boundary line. The last touch. The last touch out of bounds. So off the boot of Frampton. You get a touch on it. No, he's saying... Umpire and boundary umpire is going to be overruled here by the field umpire, is he? He's going to give the free kick to Aaron Joseph. We sort it out eventually. Joseph, one of six Glenelg players with AFL experience as well. And the Tigers do it expertly as they bring it through Bradley, up the ground to McCarthy. Close to the boundary line, almost about to run out. Play on was the call. The high flyer and good grab taken here by Tommy Corcoran. Yeah, he got a lot of confidence, I reckon, out of last week's final, Tom Corcoran. Best and fairest winner at the Port Adelaide Academy. Back in 2015, Corcoran. Here's Mays with it now. Looking for Cox, going back with a fly to the ball. Captain's mark, Chris Curran has done it all year. Yeah, it's a great mark. He's very courageous back there. They've got tough players on every line. One of the best marks in the competition, Chris Curran, consistently over a long period of time. The captain, as Reynolds flies from behind, Farrell give off to lean it. Just tries to squeeze a little kick forward only as far as Partington. Ooh. Oh, his kick chopped off nicely. It's terrific work there by Woodcock. Comes out to lean it with a little chip. And here's Johnson. Was in fact strange, not Woodcock oh. before. And have a look at that work. That is Woodcock showing some courage, getting around on his left high boot, top of the square, big fly. Contest was on. Tobin Cox gets things moving quickly, slots it through from behind. Again, it's the pressure of a final, isn't it? Just uh, didn't quite have it in his hand correctly. Knew he had to get that ball onto the boot, but there's some big body clashes once again there. Jack Strange's effort here on the wing was fantastic. And then Boyd, Boyd Woodcock, his contest. And they finished 1-2 on the ladder, these teams. And it's looking like a battle between the top two, isn't it? Well, under pressure Kick. there. Did well to get it away. Jesse White. Nicholson followed it up. Now he's got Motlop. McKenzie lurking. Motlop takes the mark, though. Did that well against a very good opponent. Yeah, McKenzie, we saw him do it very well earlier in this game. But he... It was outpointed then by Mot Motlop, who had the better judgment of the football. He's got beautiful skills. You would expect him to put the Bays in front. Oh, no surprise. He was in the best players against Port Adelaide both games during the minor round and kicked goals against Port Adelaide in both games as well. And a goal kicker two weeks ago in their last game against the Double Blues. Motlop, oh, we just hurried yeah. it a little. Got close to the man on the mark. And maybe some pressure there as well as he pushes it across the face for a minor score. I think you're right, John. That was very un unlike Marlon. It's a very nice kick. It just looked like he did kick up really hard as well. Lean it and Sam Hayes. Great to see him back from that knee reconstruction. Terrific player from Upper Ferntree Gully in Melbourne's Outer East. All-Australian as an under-18. Tim, he's, looks like he's going to have a huge future. As Curran misses what he'd normally take. Johnson back in the side, gives it to Mays. Little flick over the top. Davidson, here's Sutcliffe on the little inside out kick. Here's Farrell. We know he's got a great goal sense on the left boot. Kane Farrell scores. Terrific finish. And just signed a three year deal, an extension a couple of weeks ago. And he is up and about. I think once he had just that one metre with ball in hand, that's all he needs. He's such a high school player. Just watch the way Sutcliffe squeezes this one out on his right. One metre bank. That's all he needs. He's just so silky smooth with his skills. And uh, he finished that one off. And that's a costly one for the Bays, that miss, because that's uh, the old seven-point players, they say, down the other end. Port Adelaide able to answer straight away. He's got some nice composure about him, Kane Farrell. We've seen that at the top level 
as well. Doesn't get too flustered under pressure, and we saw that again there. Leading goal kicker for the Magpies last year, Kane Farrell. He's into the ruck, won the tap, but it was Shark there by Snoop. Partington, handball for Agnew. Went astray. Did a good job there under pressure. Jesse White balanced himself up. Kicks towards centre half forward. No mark paid there, somewhat surprisingly. So a chance for Corey Gregson to get a quick reply, but he went with the banana kick. And put it on the fat side, never had it on target, through for a minor score. It's amazing how many players don't have an opposite side these days. Kick by McKenzie was magnificent, wasn't it? Good one, a big haze again. Good ruck stops at Port Adelaide with young Ruckman, of course. With, oh, he's kicked that one out with Laddams playing well as coughs that one up to Agnew. His kick wasn't great either. Well Reynolds, Garner coming at it, lean it. Possession number 12. If he can give it off, and he does, he just <laughs> waits. And he picked the right option too, Tim. A great kick of Mays. Oh, he's so good, isn't he? Little chip over the top. Boyd Woodcock, premiership player with North Adelaide last year, and got himself onto a rookie list with his great performance in the finals. Johnson back in the side, goes around the corner. Cut off by Aaron Joseph. Cool, calm, collected. Wise old head in the background there. Yeah, it was a poor kick, Soda. It, it, uh, he had plenty of options there. Johnson, but you know, lacing out Aaron Joseph. Five scoring shots apiece so far. Port Adelaide with a five point advantage. Mark taken on the siren there by Luke Partington. So an entertaining first quarter concludes here. How about Partington going the barrel after the event from half back? You get it up to half forward, but no score there. And it's a five point lead for Port Adelaide. We'll be back with more here from the Adelaide Oval, live and free here on seven. Seven's iconic AFL chat show, tackling all the big issues. Wherever he goes, he wreaks havoc. You're mesmerised by what he's capable of doing. Setting the AFL agenda. I really do think he's got currency. A happy Eddie Betts at Carlton could do some damage. On this week's edition, we will bring you all the news and reviews from a massive first week of finals. Don't miss Talking Footy, Monday 7.30 on Mate. of NFL. Are you kidding me? Live and free. Yeah, NFL is live Monday on 7 Mate at 7 Plus. Sides ranked one and two in the sample competition this year, and the start of this second semi final has been tough and hard and at a frenetic pace as well. Partington getting a fair bit of the footy as he has all year. Jared Leanard has started well, and single goal kickers across the board. Let's head down now to Red Big Ones. Man, that's a very intense start. You happy with it? Uh, yeah, I thought Glenelg come at us. I think we were 7 0 down in clearance um, in the first probably 10 or 15 minutes and got it back to 10 8 by a quarter time. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty good contest. We're in the inside 50 count at the moment, no, uh, certainly need to capitalise there. Yeah, well, we know, again, that's their strength. Curran and Proud are very good at coming off and intercepting the ball. So we've got some things in place to try and nullify that. And um, if we get the ball in there, hopefully we can score. Thanks, Matty. Thank you. There he is, Matty Locken. Uh, and he's right about those clearances. Partington's had three. Jesse White's had three. Michael Virgin has had two, Timmy. But they did even the ledger in that particular area. But lots of inside 50 for Port Adelaide. Put that off. What was the count? It was 15, 14-7. Uh, 14-7. So Port Adelaide dominated that uh, stat, but not on the scoreboard, did they? So I thought Glenelg's entries were a lot more open and a lot more dangerous looking. This match certainly played at a different pace to what we saw the other game start at, Tim. Oh, absolutely. This is a, a final where the intensity is right up. There's not a lot of room for error, and you have to make sure you're prepared to go in hard because you're, uh, you're going to come out hard otherwise. Lots of two highest scoring teams in the competition. And also the best defensive team and the most accurate team. They're also the top two teams in terms of average disposals as well. Port Adelaide at 371 on average a game. Glenelg at 358. So they're set to go here in the second quarter. Spot in the grand final up for grabs. 
1993 qualifying final, the last time these two met in a final. As we mentioned, 26 years ago, Timmy G was up and about. <laughs> the bounce, well, they're going to have to recall that as it went outside the circle. It's such a long drought for Glenelg as well. 2011, their last finals, eight years ago. 86, the last premiership. 08, their last grand final. 09, the last minor premiership. So 10 years between minor premierships. Lean it about to be dragged down. Gets his kick away just in oh, time, well but it was disrupted and current. And full credit there to Darcy Bailey. He ran down lean it just to affect the kick and this is snook they look composed don't they glenelg They've been outstanding all year and i'm overawed here at adelaide oval at the moment as scott takes a good grab on the paint of 50. Yeah, it's so good there he saw the one-on-one -on -one contest going on between mckenzie and mcbean he just dived in so to the top of the square Scharenberg at the back smothered by mckenzie and the kick scurried away from there by Cam Hewitt, I think it was. Virgin hands over. Max Proud with a left boot around the corner. McBean was being held. Couldn't oh, get to the contest. Each other. And two Glenelg players just spoiled them one another. It was Nicholson and Reynolds. And the ball brought to ground. And we'll have a ball up. With Glenelg pressing here at the moment. McBean tapped down. Three Port Adelaide players there. Attlee with it on his left. Good work there by... Marshall got rid of Gould, then just went with a handball over top to Farrell. Gould back in the contest there, forced the turnover for the base. And another one gives it up to Drew, coughed it up. Atley taking high free kick for the throw is going to go to Glenelg. And Marlon Motlock. Look at that, there it is. Willem Drew being busted for that as Motlop's kick goes up. Big contest, taken down. Garner, big hit from Darcy Bailey. And again, this term has started like we saw in the first. Really physical stuff. You're not wrong. You have to want that ball. Tell you what, it's going to be fierce when you get it. Doing all the attacking here, the Tigers. Three inside 50s inside the first two minutes. Port Adelaide haven't had it at their end yet. Laddons, that looked like a throw as well. McKenzie with a left foot. Good contest from Joseph. Ball tackle. springs free. How about the tackle from Michael Virgin there as he drags Woodcock down. They're still pressing here, the Tigers, but Garner is there to take a relieving mark. And handball out now. And McKenzie with it once more. He kicked into Marlon Motlop. And he stood tall and he's going back to give him some advice as well. Oh, well, well. Just be careful of that. There's been about uh, six mothers in this game, so it might continue on. But uh, they are pressing. Just took it a bit casually, McKenzie. He saw the option. He just a little casual with that delivery, but he's been in good form. Yeah, and six disposals already as Laddams wins the tap against McBean. Bradley found it, though. It was then dispossessed and wasn't correct disposal. Good, strong tackle applied there by Kane Farrell. Wins it back for the Magpies. Yeah, tackling for both teams has been superb. Really good feature of the game so far. Farrell on the retreat here gets McKenzie involved once more, and the left footer goes straight up the line. Joseph did a good job there against Davidson. Just to bustle him underneath the drop zone. Curran. Oh, Johnson took him high. He's knocked down. There's no whistle on the play. And that just looked a little untidy. Gregson, the high flyer. Got a hand to it over the back of Marshall. Gould about to be wrapped up by Willem Drew, which affected the kick. And it comes to Farrell once more. Up the line. Here's Willem Drew. They kick inside. And he finds it aptly. Going to start leading up. Port Adelaide did this a bit in the first half last week where they just waited. Got to come up at them. Hayes contested up against Proud. Gould back. Uber Gang with a long one coming into the side today. The former Docker and Motlop. Strong hands. Let's get a sense he's in for something big today, Marlon Motlop. And his kick is a good one to advantage of McBean. Getting across was McKenzie. Did that well. Leader picks it up. Hewitt in a bit of trouble. Works his way back to Garner. Just a little chipper. Big slap from McBean. And he may well get a free kick here. I think he is the umpire that was further away from the play. Has come in. Plucked that from the middle of the ground. The free kick's going to go to McBean against Garner. Just thought the uh, play there. Probably just a little cute with what they were trying to do in that back line. Just uh, get that ball going, boys. Get it out of that area, and you don't get yourself into this sort of trouble. McBean putting himself on the line. Kicked one goal in that first term. 
And look at the right finger there, Red Biglands. The tip that uh, may have dislocated the finger, missed out on that game against Sturt a couple of weeks ago. Didn't stop him kicking beautifully before in that first term. The former Richmond Tiger had a year off last year. And his kick yeah. looks pretty good. Steered it through the middle and it's a great kick. Bays back in front. Well, look, look, look at this again on the National Pharmacy's optical replay. Aiden Johnson with a high shot there on Curran, which we might hear a little more about. And also Garner there guilty of taking his eye off the ball and lining up the player and was lucky he really didn't catch McBean and hurt him a little more than he did. But McBean steadies and kicks the goal, his second. And they've got it on their terms at the moment here. The Tigers, albeit a one-point lead in a seesawing affair. Look at the palm work from Jesse White, just straight down to Brad Agnew, who races out of the centre. Scott, the target, couldn't get there. Ball hits the deck. Lenog with numbers around it. Port with some defending to do. That was intelligent work from Sutcliffe. Crashes into Scott. Ball comes out of the back. Darcy Bailey with a chance, and he kicks the goal. Two in a minute here for the Tigers, who open up a seven-point lead. Big clash here just didn't stay low and hard enough got to stay low and that's what Scott did he caused the uh, the contest which slipped the ball out not much room there for Darcy Bailey but he sneaks an absolute beauty Tim just look like it took Glenelg a little time to settle in yes. that first turn and now they look good the umpire have to recall that one back no he's let it go it was just within the square slap back by White Laddams got a runner in Woodcock Knocks it forward, and Marshall taking down the tackle there from Proud was pretty tough work there on Davidson. And looking at the contested football at the moment, 55 to 40, so Glenelg plus 15. There's your difference. Mark Stone did say at quarter time, Soda, you were spot on. They weathered the storm in the quarter time break and found their way through the match. But he also wanted them to use a shorter kick coming out of half back. He said there were options there when they did take intercept marks. Agnew with it. Well, he sold Jesse White Ooh, into trouble. They're in a clash heads. of heads. Marshall and Jesse White both collapsed to the deck here. Yeah. And he looks a little second-hand here, Jesse White, and so does Marshall, who's barely moved. So, concern for both players here. You'll see Marshall come in from behind. Oh, that's a conk, isn't it? And right to the right temple there. Ooh. Marshall, very groggy. He's going to be helped off the ground. Jesse White says he wants to stay out there at the moment. But Todd Marshall... He's coming off as play restarts. Eight and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. Laddams with the tap, but it was to open space. Nicholson got there first. He was dispossessed. Here's Garner going through strongly. Jesse White's up and about. He dragged Garner down. Yeah, and he did well there, Jesse White, because that was a fair conk on the head, and he's just got straight back up into the contest. Marshall looks to I be like okay. That. They're assessing him now after that head clash. He's a little bit wobbly, but uh, doesn't seem to have too much concussion going on. Hewitt does that well, but his kick is just a wobbler going forward. Will Gould, who's had a bit of the footy today, showing all his wares. Gould. Yeah, they're holding up well, the Bays. I think Port have just got a little untidy in this second term. Possession number eight for Gould. The scouts, plenty of attention on him at the moment. McBean doing some work against McKenzie in the free kick. He's going to go to the ladder. Had a terrific game last week against the Crows. McKenzie with that big, powerful weapon. That left foot of his. Laddams just over his head. Gould, another opportunity to go at it. Quick kick from Nicholson's. A bit of a wobbler. Mark taken by Drew. Start of the year off at AFL level. Kick into the pocket. Going back. Frampton. Did that go through the hands and touch them? It may have just... No. No, it didn't. So Glenelg will get the last possession out of bounds. Free kick to bring it in. No, it has touched the hands. No. No, it hasn't. Righto. We'll get this sorted. Let's have a look. Mm. Didn't it went, if well, it didn't, didn't went straight did, through the middle of it. He didn't protest, so we'll assume. Ooh, that's a wobbly wobbly. restart from Curran. And Leanett couldn't control it. A little blindsided. Deflects out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw. Middle stage of the second quarter. A chance for us to look at some more team forward footy trivia for Tim Ginova. Can you tell us who missed the 1990 grand final after injuring an ankle in the second semi-final between Glenelg and Port? David Brown, Rowan Smith, Clayton Land, and Robbie Thompson. Some famous names there for you to ponder, Tim. I should know this. I reckon you should know it. I reckon you do know it. But we'll let our viewers at home who are playing along have a think about that for the moment. Look at the tackling of Glenelg here. 
They are all over Port Adelaide. That was Johnny Scharenberg getting involved there. And eventually climbs off the deck. Joe Attlee wondering where the bus went that just ran over the top of him. Uber gang with it. Right half back between half back and centre wing. Congested ahead of him where the drop zone's going to be for this kick. McBean against McKenzie. Interesting matchup. McKenzie giving away more than 10 centimetres in height. McBean found it on the ground, put it on the boot, gets it forward. Reynolds with a couple to beat, goes off the ground. Partially smothered there by Trengo. Close, good pressure. This is Garner. He too got problem. Marlon Motlop dispossessed him. It looked like holding the ball, umpire. And he says, throw it in. Yeah, they've really lifted the tempo and the intensity here. There was an attempt there, whether that was legal or not. Marlon says, I reckon it's a free kick. But uh, they've really lifted the intensity. And Port Adelaide just taking a while to get their settling period down. Tackle count at 28 apiece at the moment as Darcy Bailey looked for a bit of a free kick there. Hurried kick going forward. Michael Virgin going back. A little bump from Good Togan Cox. Farrell just holds on to it long enough to draw Mays as a runner going past. His kick is very, very good to advantage. Here we go. Davidson, can he get around Gould? Get some support. Johnson into the side today, coming oh, back from suspension. Mark. And Mays in the gully just grabs it out of the air nicely. It was outstanding. I mean, this is a bullet. Watch this. He didn't have much time, and that is a diving, absolute sensational gully catch. Uh, Sam Mays was very good last week. Ricky Ponting at full flight. And from the Roosters to the Lions and to Port Adelaide. Pretty much straight in front. 30 out. This is to get Port back within a point, and he does it. Finishes clinically. We've got a really tough final on our hands here for the winner straight into the grand final and Sam Mays just kicking a little steadier for Port Adelaide after under siege a fair bit in this second term from the Bays onslaught. And Jesse White in the ruck up against Hayes. On the restart. White in quickly. Agnew found it on the deck. Goes back to White, who will kick out of the centre circle. Wobbles it forward. Out comes a strong leaping Reynolds. Couldn't complete the mark against his former team. Slides away from one tackle. Lean it from behind, though. Dispossessed him on the kick. Nicholson came through strongly. But a good tackle from Ellsworthy there. Held him up. This is Gregson. Wrapped up by Mays. Dragged down. And we'll have a ball up. Left half forward here. And the difference when you have ball in hand down here at ground level between the average home and away season, it's remarkable the speed of this down here at the moment. They're ferocious in shutting down the time and space when the player has the ball. Quick kick from Nicholson going forward again. Big fly at the back with Scott, but Corcoran showed some really good moments in that first term. Tim talked about his composure. It's a good mark that he took, and that too is another good mark. So the two development players combining well, Davidson and Corcoran. It was a terrific mark by Corcoran. He really is confident at this level now. Jesse White in best position here. He's recovered okay from that head clash with Marshall. Important player. Jesse White, he's had a, a wonderful season for Glenelg in the ruck. Really found a place to make his mark in this competition. Mark. Going back with a flight, though. Some courage as well. That was really impressive work there by Jack Trengo. Oh, that was terrific. Really strong finals mark, that one. His kick for Sutcliffe had to be precise, and it was. Running past McKenzie. Unloads. Goes for distance. He's got them running back here under pressure. Curran had it knocked away by Aiden Johnson, and he's going to march into the open goal and put Port Adelaide back on top. Well, Jack Trengove take a bow. It was your mark that got it to McKenzie then. The long, long, long ball. I mean, Curran, he marks everything. That ball was so long that it just outreached him in the end and allowed Aidan Johnson an easy running goal. Again, that powerful kick of McKenzie is being used as a big weapon, and you could see as soon as Curran went to ground, it was all over. Aidan Johnson into the side this week, missed the game with suspension, and he's provided just another option for them as Snook gets the clearance. High ball, Mays sitting under it. 
Trengove. And this is Brad Close with the long sleeves. Little kick from Nicholson. Motlop. Okay to trap it. Gets some control. Gives it to Close. He's got a good goal sense, but he's a long way out to even use that as Motlop with his kick going forward. McKenzie going back, couldn't take Ooh. it. Hewitt intercepted here by Reynolds. Clever player, Reynolds. Just gives it up. Atley Hayes. He gives it up too to Michael Virgin, who's had a good game, the former Rooster. And what a change in career it's been for him going from North Adelaide to Glenelg. It's, this is, there's been a lot of this all day, hasn't there? Terrific tackling by both teams. Well, Snook held without it on this occasion. Wins a free kick against Trengove. Beyond his range, though. Got McBean in the goal square. Josh Scott down there as well. And Reynolds. So three prime targets. Scott on the lead. That's ignored. McBean to the pocket. He goes there now. And he's got enough carry. Good defensive pressure from McKenzie. Undersized in terms of height. But read it well. And how about the underground hand pass as well from Jack Strange. And Port get out of trouble. Marshall going back with the flight. Can't complete it. Here's Tobin Cox against Jesse White. Dragged off it. Joseph with the loose ball, but a free kick going to Tobin Cox. Jesse White just getting a little too excited with the tackle. Well, the kick, though, from oh, Cox. Oh. Missed the target in Atley. Bradley overran it. Has to paddle it forward. Close is there. Likewise, Ellsworthy. Tobin Cox involved once more for Hayes. Oh, half volley Corcoran. Did well under yeah. pressure. His kick, though, oh, just man. opens the door, going back with the flight of the ball. And a nice job being done there by Brad McCarthy. Good mark one-on-one -on -one there, but... Good players just throwing that ball around <laughs> to the opposition. It's a hot footy at the turnovers. moment. Scott, third in line there, couldn't mark the ball. This is Bradley, bustled off it. In comes Bailey, look away hand pass to Reynolds, who gets it back from Darcy Bailey. Bailey went for wide instead. He needs to be good here, and he is. Blind turn was excellent now, looking for McBean. Oh, he held off McKenzie, took the grab as well, and Liam McBean will go back with a chance to kick his third. Well, that was one of the clearance here on the wing, wasn't it? You know, that's where the tough work's done. You're just, just trying to, even a little toe poke that just gets it one metre ahead can really pay off for you. And Luke Reynolds was involved in that play as well to get that ball forward. Nice kick in the end to McBean by one. Including today, he's kicked goals in 15 of the 18 games that he's played this season, McBean. The Farmer medalist, this for his third. And to put Glenelg back in front, he says, yes, sir. Tigers on top. Well, some pretty tough work by the Bays on the centre wing. See it come out to the pirouetting Jesse White and just kicks it to his side. A terrific kick for McBean to mark and goal. He's a big unit, McBean. He's got his third 202 centimetres going up against McKenzie there at 191. He was agile for a guy that size, and now he's in the ruck. Doing that work there as the ball comes forward. Good pick up by Sam Mays to Sam Hayes. And here comes McBean. has got the hands up looking for a free kick. And he gets it. It's a long way out. He'd have to kick from 60, so to be beyond him from here. Just sets the kick up looking for a lead. McKenzie. Oh, Mark. Great mark. Really good mark in front of Nicholson. I just reckon he should have hit the, the Scott lead. You know, Josh Scott led up. He should have hit that one. He was really dynamically leading. And there was too many short players behind Scott. Former Gold Coast son finds Woodcock out at half back. Just drops a little one in forward and maintain, maintain possession to Trengove. Expect him to get plenty of votes in the McGarry medal tomorrow night. 8.45 on seven, mate. You can watch that, although Jack did miss five games with that injury, which could well cost him. You know, five games at Port Adelaide, one, two. Well, Glenelg doing all the attacking in this second quarter. 14 inside 50s to four. Marshall flies high, hit the pack hard. Johnson read it well on the deck. And now the speedster's off and running. Sam Davidson off. He was running so fast he couldn't get the shot on target. Speed wobbles. Well, he had exactly that. And, and the way the ball dropped was a speed wobbler as well. And uh, just with that sort of pace, you're just going to be able to click that one gear back for when you deliver the goal. I reckon there was no better exponent of that than Craig Bradley. He could absolutely accelerate away and then he would just drop it back and just deliver magnificently. Good hands by McBean. It's like going down a hill on your BMX when you're a kid and you just get that little buckle going and you know that... <laughs> you can't control it. <laughs> it's only a matter of metres and you're going over the handlebars. That's oh, what Sam yeah. Davidson did as that was cut off there by Tobin Cox. 
Good chance to pump him back in. Port Adelaide into attack. Proud. Billy Frampton. Johnson come back. There's a whistle, and it's going to go Glenelg's way. But Billy Frampton just didn't have to do that. He's in, Curran, the, he's in the contest. Just didn't ooh. have to do that. Might well, be looked at again on replay as well by the tribunal because Curran's looking very second-hand here at the moment. Got the couple today, Curran, too. And Hayden Johnson might have a repeat trip to the Sandford Tribunal as well. Of course, he was rubbed out for a week prior to that, and he hit Curran prior to that one then from Billy Frampton. So he's a marked man, Chris Curran. Well, let's get back to the Mourn team forward footy trivia for Tim Ginnivar, who missed the 1990 grand final after being injured in the second semi between these teams, Tim. It was C's, Clank Lamb. I reckon he actually broke either his ankle or his leg. So it was a pretty serious one and, and uh, a nasty one for him. Poor old Clank. Good lad. Indeed. Well played by you as Willem Drew drives Port Adelaide four. Whistle on the play. Free kick going the way of Glenelg once more. That's 16 free kicks to six now in favour of the Tigers. Not a lot of them you would argue about. Adelaide just a little guilty of going the man rather than the ball here. Well, that should have been paid a mark almost to Luke Partington. It was slapped out of his hands after he'd stopped it in midair by Mays. Goes to Marshall. Tight angle, bringing it back, but not enough. And through for another minor score. Port Adelaide moves to 5-4, 34. They retake the lead. Well, no, 5-3-33 in a seesawing affair. We've already seen five lead changes here in the first half. I think if we see that replay, the reason they didn't play it was that Sam Mays actually got full purchase on the footy and not the man. Had he touched the man, he would have been penalised. There's clever from Mays. Timmy well picked up. It's a great contest. Really tough, tight and hard. Typical finals footy you'd expect. You saw Tim Jennifer smile on his face because this game has really gone up a level. You were thinking intensity from the game we saw a little earlier as Laddams takes it out of the ruck, gets the clearing kick. It's a foot race, Virgin and Woodcock, but it comes to Johnson. He's got time to spin oh, wow. around. It looks like a good kick. Oh, he loves it too. He's got the wings out, enjoying it. Just a really good one-on-one -on -one effort here. He just gets rid of Curran, who's a great player, and then he swings this right around his body back. That is a fantastic goal by Aiden Johnson. High-quality finish, wasn't it, Tim? Two goals in 10 minutes here in this term for Aiden Johnson. Port Adelaide have a seven-point advantage here. Sixth lead change in the game. Snook wrapped up by Attlee, dispossessed. Willem Drew involved as well. And Suckliff in over the top there and a stalemate. So the umpire is going to come in 25, almost 26 minutes played here in the second quarter. 76 to 62, Glenelg's way contested possessions. It is a really tough game, let me tell you. They are really going in hard. Scott the target here, but the kick favours Garner. Gets back on the left Ooh. boot, just slid off the side. And getting there, Bradley escorts it over. He got a hand to it, so we'll have a boundary throw in. He shouldn't have touched that. He was under a little bit of pressure, I think. He didn't want to be seen to be trying to escort it over. Of course, that was one of the big complaints that we heard when this rule was brought in, and it hasn't eventuated at all. It's been a huge success, and congratulations on the sample for being proactive and leading the way. I'm sure we're going to see it at AFL level at some stage in the future. Willem Drew didn't appreciate the contact there as he was slammed into the deck by Brad Agnew, and the two redheads are going at it. Yeah, well, I think you're fine um, that the last contest he had hold of his Guernsey and he was really upset about it. There it is there. So he had hold of the Guernsey prior to him even getting the ball. And, oh, I think he had every right to complain to the umpire about that one. A lot of anger amongst those two. <laughs> Snook taken down by Sutcliffe. Partington under pressure. He's had the nine touches, Partington. They've really tried to shut his run down. He's got a great change of pace in his first ten. The last stoppage there, I reckon I could hear the growling in between Darcy and Willem Drew. They are really going at it toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, still right now, both those boys are going. Bradley taken down by Woodcock. Quick kick from close, got the hands, and Drew going back. Oh, there's Darcy Bailey getting in. It's a, just a battle of the redheads. Now he wants to have a go at uh, Willem Drew. It's almost fashion now. Red hair. <laughs> it's a lot of them. <laughs> You're really enjoying this battle between Laddams and Jesse White. Jesse White with good. 14 hit-outs. Laddams with 11. Probably shading 
his AFL counterpart at the moment. But it's getting tight and difficult to break free now. He's Almost had, 28 minutes played, term number two. He's had a fair game though, Jesse. 11 possessions. Made some impact. Push and shove off the ball. Snoop goes down. No whistle forthcoming. Adley had it. And here's Agnew with the left boot. Driving forward. Scott the target. Garner just oh, muscled him under the ball. And came up with a mark as well. That's terrific work. He, he plays so much taller than his height. Trengove with it. He wants support. Bring it back in board. He's Ellsworthy. Now Garner looks undersized against Josh Scott. Who we know is a big, strong marking forward. But... He's more than holding his own at the moment. This is Hewitt with it. Short pass. And finds Leanit. Coming up for disposal number 15. Leanit. And 12 in that opening quarter. Well, Adelaide just happy to slow the tempo at this stage late in the second term. So they've just had about five or six kicks to maintain possession. Seeing some good momentum swings. Big flight from behind was from Joseph. He's pushing the ball Good forward. Effort. That was very clever. Now it comes to Sutcliffe. Good. Good and his kick. kick to Marshall is a good one. Good to see he's recovered too after that head clash with White. Both the boys up and about. But you felt Glenelg really settled well at the start of this term. But Port Adelaide have swung the momentum back that way. And that was a ripping little handball that came out from Davidson to Sutcliffe. To uh, Sutcliffe, which enabled him to find Marshall. Well, Todd Marshall got a chance to put Port Adelaide just that little bit further ahead. It was a terrific second term. Clonell really taking it up to Port Adelaide early, and Port just managed to settle down. I think the Sam Mays goal was the, the real key to that. Marshall kicked the opening goal of the game. He's got a nice chance to bookend the opening half and fails to capitalize on that so Port Adelaide will still take the lead into this half time it has been a great contest plenty of attention now you have a look at all the players just swarming over a little bit of push and shove so we like a little bit of heat on the contest it has been a great first half of footy Tim Jennifer's licking his lips because he loves seeing both teams going hard at it physically oh, it's exactly what you want in a final and I reckon it's delivered so far and it's, it's what I expected. I thought that Port would probably start a bit better because of their uh, game last week. And then the Bays really answered well. And I thought their good majority of that second quarter was pretty good finals football. Red Biglin's stand on the ground. Cam, plenty of feeling in this one? Yeah, it's a pretty fierce contest at the moment, you know. Um, we're just trying to convert. And if we can convert and probably maybe get two or three goals ahead, should stem the tide of all their runs. So we're hoping to do that. Your coach spoke about making the most of your inside forward 50 opportunities because Glenelg is so strong with their rebound, but you're working hard up there. We are working hard. You know, we want to convert. And, you know, we had that problem last week. If we can kick a couple, it would be nice. So, yeah, we're looking to do that. Thanks, mate. Good luck. There he is, Cam Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe, three goals apiece in that term. It was five points a quarter time. Port Adelaide, eight points here at halftime. time Port Adelaide it is tough and tight they're up by eight points and we look at Jared Lena he started the game with plenty of the footy early on a little quieter in that second term Matty Snook tough and hard at it uh, Jesse White having a great battle in the ruck against Peter Laddams Liam McBean with his three goals and Aidan Johnson just lit things up with a couple of goals in that second term there Timmy G have a look at the contested possession so Glenelg looking good there but look at the ratio between their contested and uncontested now that is pretty unusual but it shows how tight it is well, it's a tough and hard final. That's what you expect. And I know in close, the clashes have been fantastic. Both teams are going in really hard. And some of the tackling has been mm. outstanding as well. So that's what you expect in a final. There's not a lot of outside running ball at the moment as they probably fatigue as we get the uh, game on. We'll see a bit more open football. But uh, it's been a really good final, an entertaining one on both ends. Yeah, tough, tight contest. Uh, the tackling has been hard. But there's been, look, a couple of little moments that we will take a look at here. Uh, there's some highlights first. And... This was a good start there by Marshall to get things moving, Tim. 
I, I think, yeah, they, they kicked the first two goals and looked to settle a lot quicker. This goal from Matty Snoop was the first one for the Bays and got them going. And McBean's had a good game. I think he's got three on the board already and playing some good football. So, yeah, no, it's been a really entertaining contest. Some great composure by Kane Farrell there. And we saw, of course, um, Johnson, Aiden Johnson, a couple of really nice moments by him, Timmy, to uh, give Port Adelaide that nice eight-point break. Now, there were a couple of incidents we want to have a quick look at here and just see whether these boys well, might be in trouble. Two Port Adelaide situations here, Tim. First of all, Aiden Johnson. Yeah, that one's uh, right at head high. They don't like that, and so is that one there. So I haven't... Uh you can see that Curran copped that one yep. up in the ear. Um, and you're right, they will mm. be looked at. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about that at all, Timmy G. Um, just the way that the game has moved, we saw that Glenelg did settle well at the start of that second term. It was like they weathered the storm in that first term. But Port Adelaide were able to wrestle back momentum again probably halfway through that second term. Well, I thought the base started the second term really well. And it looked like they were... I think they had four or five inside 50s before Port Adelaide could blink. So, and they got a couple of goals yep. out of it. And it looked like they might be taking uh, momentum. But you're right, Port Adelaide then at times just held the ball off of them. Mm. That's why they had those 90 uncontested yep. possessions. They were just able to hold it off them and then get some over the top inside where Aiden Johnson, as you saw, kicked a couple of real fast running goals. Now, the winner of this game gets uh, direct passage into the grand final in a fortnight's time. The loser will take on the Adelaide Football Club who absolutely monstered Norwood. They got up by 62 points if you just joined us and weren't aware of the result. It was a pretty impressive performance by them. This is the Crows boys singing the song. Well, Heath, a serious turnaround from last week. Take us through it. I oh, look, to be honest, Hazy, I thought last week we were pretty good um, for three quarters, and it's a, it was a different game today. And we brought back some, we brought back two rocks, which we obviously knew that would help us around the contest. We're going to be less reactive around the ball, and uh, I thought. Those two in particular, in Hunter and Strawn, gave us first look. And it started the way we competed early, and it was no different to last week. We were just able to get some scoreboard pressure and, you know, what was 6-1 six, six to one in the first quarter, set the game up. It just seemed, you mentioned the two rucks back in, it just freed Elliot Himmelberg up so much as well. It's such a, a more direct passage to goal. Yeah, no doubt. We, we had a style last week that was we had to make up on the fly with no rucks and we're able to go back the way our traditional style of play, which for the majority of the year it's held up pretty strongly. So uh, today we're able to go back to that and I thought our guys executed really strongly. Now, Heath, your performance today probably answers this question, but there's still a lot of critics out there uh, that are knocking the Crows. Do you want to win this thing? Yeah, and look, rightly so. If they the, the criticism that comes at different stages of the year, do we develop or win? I, I would have thought today's before the last two weeks' performance would indicate that we're very, very keen to win this, and uh, we believe that we we can go a fair way. So, hopefully, uh, we grow more belief off today's performance, and um, in the end, the critics will be the critics. Well, it was seriously impressive, mate. Congratulations. Good luck next week. Thanks, Hazy. Andrew Hayes there with Heath Uni. He's done a great job, Heath Uni, this year and really went and sought some development top-up players that are of a level higher than they've had in the past and it worked really, really well for them. They are into the preliminary final. Right now it is Port Adelaide up by eight points against Glenelg. This is a tough, tight battle. Plenty more to come after the break here on 7. Well, half-time here of our second semi-final and Glenelg are trailing Port Adelaide by eight points. And Tim Jennifer, we love the support of Powerade. We always look at our breakthrough players of the year and we've been running through in the first game a little earlier. We looked at the first six nominees. Uh, these are the young players that are really making their way in the competition. $2,000 for the breakthrough player of the year. Let's pick up from round seven. And this man, Cameron Tahini, he has got a big future, no doubt. Well, all these lads do, but uh, this, this lad can really play. He does... Uh the hard work, the smart stuff. There's Dylan Stevens, who we know we've seen in finals here the last couple of weeks, being very good. Uh, Finn Betterman, of course, uh, also a very, very good young player. And Mason Neagle, he had a good season. Uh, really promising for next year, too. I like the way that he went about his work. Steve Burton, we saw him, a really ready-made, rough and tough rumble mm. player, this fella. Really likes to go in. Little Frankie, I've seen him 
play a lot of football, and this is a, this is a class act when he kicked this goal down Elizabeth. Magnificent. Yeah, he had some good footy, Frank Zeckley, uh, brother of Wade Thompson and Chris Don Thompson, who both played some football for North Adelaide. Wade Thompson, of course, played some games for the power, and yep. he was super fast, good. wasn't he? Absolutely. Unbelievably. Yeah. And we'll pick up with some more of those players next week to have a look at uh, who will be your Powerade Breakthrough Player of the Year. Now, Timmy, our Goals of the Week, Channel 7 News Goals of the Week, Wednesday night, John Casey has his little segment on Channel 7 at the he moment. He likes it too. Goes along very nicely. <laughs> These are the three to choose from from last week's two finals. Frampton, Andy Otten, just a little tap. It was a good one, but it wasn't trapped in time. Laddams goes, rounds and finishes! Stevens, he's got to get around Good Carey, work, does man. that That's with amazing. absolute ease. Has a bounce on the left foot. The what teenager finish. finishes superbly. Drives long. Mackenzie was there, fell to the ground. Stengel is there, looking dangerous. Kicks against Frederick around the body. How about that from Tyson Stengel? Uh, three very nice finishes, finishes there, Jimmy G. Very nice goals indeed. I think I got the Dylan Stevens one for myself. A uh, very good player. He's going to be drafted. Don't you worry about that. Glenelg Footy Club right now, they are the minor premiers, but they are eight points down here at half time. The second half of what's already been a really tough, tight contest coming up on Channel 7 next. Welcome back to the Adelaide Oval. It's uh, Port Adelaide by eight points over Glenelg at the moment, but time now for our statewide super mini leaguer of the week. And Rhett Biglands caught up with one up and coming superstar a little earlier. Time for another edition of the statewide super mini leaguer of the week. And this week it's Trey Schubert from the Plimpton Bulldogs. Congratulations, Trey. Whack that on your head. The famous players that have come from the Plimpton Bulldogs. Can you name any of them? Um, Bryce Gibbs is a player. Super Colton and Crows. Superstar player, well done. Now, who's your favourite Sample team? Glenelg. Favourite Sample player? McBean, because he's nice and tall and kicks lots of goals. How many goals have you kicked in the mini league this year? Um, I think once, one or two. So, yeah. Good stuff. Hey, uh, what, what's the funniest thing you've ever seen? Oh, my friend um, was getting chucked in the pool by his dad, and he held on. He held onto his arm, and he got pulled in him himself and he was fully clothed so yeah could he swim fully clothed <laughs> i don't know no phone on him though yeah oh i think so i think he might have had a phone <laughs> yep had a watch as well so that was not good <laughs> that's a disaster uh, what about outside of footy what do you like to do um i like watching football and i like playing with my friends a lot i like watching um intense football games close scoring and yeah I think it's going to be intense out here this afternoon. Hopefully Glenel will get up. What's your favourite song? Favourite song? I like Dance Monkey. <laughs> What's Dance Monkey? I don't know this one. Oh, I wouldn't sing it to you. I don't want to hurt your, I don't want to hurt your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to listen to Mark Sotis from all the time. My ears are ruined. Don't worry about that. We really appreciate you being a part of uh, the Statewide Super Mini League of the Week. Good luck this afternoon. When you kick a goal, you've got to point at the camera. All right. Sure. Sounds and give us a celebration. Yeah, all right. Well done. Thanks, Drake. Thanks. Ah, well done to Trey Schubert and Red Biglins. It might have met his match there, I think. Trey had it all under control. Good stories and knew all the past players. And He's a talent. He was a talent. I think he could do a good role in the commentary position as well. Maybe we'll have to add that to the, the statewide super mini leaguer of the week competition next year. And if you want to get involved in mini league, just contact your local sample club. They'll steer you in the right direction. And we get set to go here in the second half. His current appears to be up and about OK after being smashed on a couple of occasions. He's been public enemy number one for Port Adelaide. He's such an influential figure, the captain of the team, who marshals the defenders that Port have made him a target. But knowing Chris Curran, that's only going to make him just bite down on the mouth guard even harder and be more determined. Yeah, no, he's a courageous player, no doubt about that. He has been involved in a, a couple of big hits, but... He's uh, bounced up each time, and that's what you've got to do in finals. Jesse White, 15 hitouts, Laddams 12, so just getting the better of that. And Sam Hayes is going to start in the ruck here for Port Adelaide to start the second half against Jesse White. Joe Attlee, Trengove, and Sutcliffe also in the middle for Port Adelaide. Snook. And Partington in the middle as well for the Tigers as Hayes wins the tap. That's a throw. Yep. Good, good tackle applied there by Brad McCarthy. 
pinned the arm. And it was a throw. So free kick. Glenelg go forward inside the attacking 50. Scott just bustled under it again. What a game we're seeing from Joel Garner today. It's just so good, isn't he? Like, like I was saying, he plays taller than what he actually is, but his one-on-one -on -one ability to mark is very, very good. Taken round four, number 60 in the 2017 draft, Joel Garner. Played the four AFL games this year. I think he'll play a lot more AFL games next season. Here's Max Proud with the free kick against Laddams. And decides to drive long. Doesn't favour Scott. Garner took front position once more. McBean dispossessed. Under duress here at the moment, the Magpies defenders. McKenzie, oh, well done Woodcock. Knew he was about to be tackled, just slapped it forward. McCarthy though, around the body. One-handed Reynolds, went for the second bite. Oh, Josh Scott may have got in his way. Leanett couldn't handle the handball. Here's McBean dragged out. That's a great tackle, Jared Leanett. Umpire comes in. And it's as though we're just seeing a little bit of drizzle as well starting to arrive. It's quite Terrific. thick now, the rain actually, Case. It's uh, just starting. Looks like it's going to settle in for a short period. Bailey goes high over the shoulder. Scott being held out of it by Garner. Allowed McKenzie to come through. Flicks of a handball to Sammy Mays. And he puts it out in the direction of Tobin Cox. Reaching around there was Joseph. His opportunity now for Nicholson from outside 50. Goes low and hard. McBean in the right position. Nelly had a couple of bites at it. He's got Corcoran to deal with. Oh, wow. Finally gets rid of him. Gives it off to Reynolds. Missed. And he's missed. From wow. around about two metres out. He missed everything. That was the uh, strange thing. I think he kicked it too hard too, Sadie. Just watch this. On the replay, kicks this really hard. He just had to dribble it along the ground. Well, he doesn't get a lot of possessions, Luke Reynolds. Just seven um, when they played here against Sturt a couple of weeks ago, sorry, at Unley, and then eight the last time he played against Port Adelaide, but he is a goal kicker, and he doesn't need a lot of chances. That's a good mark, Sam Hayes, oh, holding off Jesse White and pulling in the mark. He's very good overhead, this uh, young man. Uh, he's going to be quite a good player after having to work really hard to get back from a knee reconstruction. Up the line, wanted Frampton. He's bustled over the boundary line. And Matt Ubergang. We'll have a boundary throw in two and a half minutes played, term number three. Hard to tell on your screens, but Biggles, it looks like that rain is coming down really heavily now. Certainly has. It's settled in uh, for this part of the term, and uh, that'll change the style of play, but they're still crashing in as hard as ever. The first half, the body hits down here at ground level were just huge. White, McCarthy, White again. He gets a clearing kick to half forward. There's Scott now. Still can't get away from the clutches of Garner and lean it. Just taps it out. Uh, you can see there plenty of rain. Gee, that is coming down now. It's going to make it difficult for ball handling and, and scoring as well. So goals like that one we just saw missed are going to be vital. Garner doing a good job on Scott. He's taken just the one mark today. Likewise, Reynolds just one mark for a key forward. McBean's been the saviour for Glenelg so far. He's kicked three of their five goals and taken four marks and lean it. He's been impressive today. Looked a little high there. Brad McCarthy in strongly. The umpire will throw it in. What did Dean there, you reckon, John? Uh, too Duck hard for me. Duck the head. Yeah. So the boundary throw in. McBean against Hayes. Hayes wins the tap. Trengove dispossessed. Atley well, just bobbled it. McBean got a half kick away. Loose ball, McKenzie had trouble reeling it in. Went for Strange. Here's Bill Gould, long way from full back. Josh Scott comes across. Virgin with it now. Dispossessed by Woodcock. It's a slippery scenario at the moment. Garner slides to the deck. Virgin in over the top with Motlop and will have another stalemate and a ball up. Trying to catch an, an eel in a barrel of oil at the moment, isn't it? Hayes. You ever tried that? Reaches out. Tough work, Tim. <laughs> it would be. Your tenacity might make you successful, though, <laughs> that sort of gig, I reckon. Oh, dear. Slippery. White and Hayes again. Big stretch on the Ooh. Victorian there, Hayes. As close goes up, Garner just using the body well, too, to get out. But here's Baylor. We know he's clever. He's in the right spot. Curls the ball around the corner. McKenzie going back, and he's got Reynolds to deal with. Sees it out. Now we've got sunshine. There it is. A little bit of Melbourne today. Four seasons in one day. 
bit of everything as the rain has lightened up a little. Eight points, Port Adelaide. McBean and Hayes goes back, Bailey. Just crucially couldn't hold on to it there. Snook as he goes forward, taken out of the contest. Motlop and Nicholson taken down by Mays. Paddles it forward to McBean, hacks it out of the air. Liam McBean just to the right of the goalpost. There you go. Umpires maybe giving players the benefit of the doubt in these wetter conditions. And a quick snap by McBean just off to the right. First score of the term. Played almost six minutes. McKenzie to restart. Look at the distance. Towards centre wing. Frampton in the contest. Here's Laddams close to the boundary line. Keeps it alive. Mays, who started in number 34, now wearing number three. Had, to, had some blood across it. Cyclic did well against McCarthy there. Likewise, Davidson, who got it to Trengove. Hack it forward at the moment. Here's Laddams. He gets the kick away before Bradley can get there. Curran going back. This is Willem Drew at the back. He's got the finish. He gets the goal. And Port Adelaide extend their lead out to 13 points. Well, the Bays, after having the ball inside 50 for five minutes, missed a couple of opportunities. A fast break by Port Adelaide. Leaves a big open forward 50 for him. And Willem Drew snuck forward and got himself a goal. And he's pretty happy with it. Port Adelaide dominating the uncontested possession on the outside but Grinnell plus 22 for contested ball so they are winning the contest but they just can't get any space to run in Port Adelaide holding them in beautifully as Trengove with a free kick he goes forward former Sturt boy Frampton had hands on it couldn't hold on to it Marshall little give comes from in and under from Atlee off the deck was Johnson, just over the hands of Uber Gang. The umpires just letting things go, giving both sides the benefit of the doubt at the moment. Partington harassing Marshall. Bailey trying to work their way through as well. Kick off the deck comes from close. Garner loses his footing as he picks it up. He's got time to flick a handball out. Enormous pressure. Need to kick both that. these sides. Bailey gets his kick, but there's no one for Glenelg on their forward Ooh. side of centre. And after play, free kick's going to go against... Gould and there's a little dust on the umpires let it go out to Johnson but just back here at half back for Port Adelaide they're getting into each other a little bit and Will Gould the teenager started that one yeah just a late hit on uh, McKenzie after he kicked the ball out to the wing but uh, handled himself pretty well then shallow restart here Hayes rushes toward the ball double handed it down to a teammate loose no dispute Darcy Bailey around the body. Didn't look, and it was cut out there by Jack Strange. Now Garner with a chance. Wobbles off the boot going forward, and it will be a last possession restart. In yep. fact, the boundary umpire's suggesting that was touched. And so he's going to throw it in, a boundary throw in. Well, that'll be a big bonus for Port Adelaide, because uh, that last touch would have just gone back down the line. Just in front of Michael Virgin as well, that ball. And he might be one of the smallest men on the field, but he's the loudest without doubt. This means a lot to him. He's very vocal at every stoppage, yelling at every player out there. Jesse White barrels it forward, but McKenzie is there once more. He's having another good game. Disposal number 17 for McKenzie. And a chance now for the Magpies through Jack Strange. Good distance with the kick, but reading it well, Andrew Bradley comes out with a strong fist and toward the boundary line. We'll have another boundary throw in nine and a half minutes played. Term number three. We started this term with Port Adelaide in front by eight points. They scored the only goal of the term and have opened up a 13-point margin, which is the biggest we've seen at any stage in the game. Inside 50, square now, 27 apiece. As kick around the corner comes from Mays. It's a 28-27. Now in favour of Port Adelaide. Trent go through under pressure from close. Couldn't get by Johnson he's been dangerous particularly in that second term just lurking just you know in these conditions there's going to be quick kicks off the boot uh, forwards have to play in front at the moment the Bays defense have done very well in just making sure that they're in front position taken out of the ruck and kick by Adams is cut off by Max Proud best and fairest winner at the Bay Proud long kick out Johnson well done Hewitt Hewitt and a little tap from Drew. Lean it. Looking for Farrell. Trying to get through. He's harassed by Sharon Berg. Partington. Clever hands. But Bailey couldn't get away from Woodcock. Terrific tackle. Partington going back again. He's got three Magpies. Stacks on. And he can't get any break at all. 
Yeah, some very good uh, in-close work there by the Bays and Port Adelaide's tackling. Matty Locken, the coach of Port Adelaide and former coach of Glenelg's on the headset for us at the moment. Appreciate your time, Matty. Th thinks it's going to be as quite a struggle from here. Yeah, it's a pretty good contest at the moment, isn't it? Um, you know, from our point of view, we've been able to, I suppose, get on top around the contest. And, um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a pretty scrappy game for the, for the rest of it with this rain. Hey, Matty, uh, Tim Jennifer, just uh, I think some of your defenders, Garner, McKenzie, Lena, they've just been very good at uh, positioning and then using the football. Yeah, uh, certainly. I think Trent McKenzie's been, you know, the informed defender in the comp for the second half of the year. And, um, you know, he obviously got rewarded and played some AFL footy as well. So those other two guys that you mentioned uh, um, have been pretty good for us today. And, yeah, we've got to continue to with, withhold, uh, I suppose, their opportunities going forward. Good on you, Matty. Hey, really appreciate your time, mate. No, any time, guys. There he is, Matty Locken, in the middle of coaching this game. He's... Very happy to have a chat. We really appreciate the access from the Port Adelaide Football Club and his side now 13 points up. We're 11, nearly 12 minutes into this third term. Willem Drew, the only goal kicker in the third quarter, except now Marlon Motlock comes in, shucks it and puts it through for the base. On these conditions, every little bit counts and there's just a bit of uh, sloppy work. Good tackle by Jesse White allows Marlon Motlop to swoop on that one and get a much needed goal in these uh, rainy conditions third term. Almost 13 minutes played here in the third quarter. As you can see in terms of goals, well, no one's been really able to kick more than two in a row. Good work from Agnew off the ground. You can't handle it, boys. Got to kick. Nicholson's going off the ground as well. It's up to the forward pocket following Tim Ginevers. Plan to success. McBean strongly at it, couldn't handle it. Comes back for seconds, gives it to Garner though. Under pressure, here's McKenzie. And he'll go out wide. And he's got the lead coming here from Sam Davidson, who catches it on the bounce. Well done. Works around an opponent. His kick well, it was a little too shallow. But Frandon was good enough just to harass Maxi Proud out of it. Now Marshall playing in front, wants to tap it over the back. Cox loses his feet. Mm. Aaron Joseph is there with some time, but he's used it all. And now oh. he's got problems. It looks like holding the ball. The umpire says it is. Well, well done to Tobin Cox because he was beaten in the one-on-one -on -one by Joseph, but the wet conditions made it very awkward for Joseph. And then that tackle was superb. He followed it up really well. Yeah, two goals, five last week for Tobin Cox. He's kicked one behind today. Yeah, look, he had the yips last week, no doubt about that. Let's just hope he's been on the track and got his confidence back. Port are very lucky they haven't turned over here. They've been into Aaron Joseph after that free kick. Every player going up to him, the umpire thought about it, and he's letting them have a shot on goal. The 20 year old Tobin Cox played two games with Glenelg last year for one goal, one. Up to 27 goals this season on the rookie list for Port Adelaide. The game with that long run up. It's a long nah. way from the man on the mark. Didn't look confident at all. Pushes it across the face and he's still got the yips. Yeah. You could see that in the run up. There was nothing smooth about that. Just while that was going on, Michael Virgin was on his tiptoes just ripping into Billy Frampton for the whole time. Loves having a crack at it, those two boys. Yeah. I know what that was like. Here it is, like a little terrier. Look at him. Still happy to have a go, little Michael Virgin. Big Billy saying, mate, just get away. A little yappy dog. <laughs> Come on, Virg. Out the way. Laddams uses the body. To get White out of the way. Snoop on the bottom of the pack. Strange. Come into the side today. He's working on his hands and knees there. Yeah, so it reminds me of when I played one of my first games against the Bays. There was a big blue at the Bay Oval and we're all on the ground as, as, as I stood up to get involved. Stood up right in front of Super Carey and he looked at me and said, what are you going to do? I said, not much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with it. <laughs> Wise choice, Tim. Yeah, it was. How silly. Gregson held down. <laughs> Weighed about 64 kilo. <laughs> Five foot nothing. He had you covered, I think, in terms yeah, of weight division. Covered. Yeah, he had me covered. We've had a good laugh about it since. Laddams wins the tap, starting to get on top in the ruck. It's Jesse White may be starting to tire against this multifaceted ruck combination that Port Adelaide are using at the moment. Tobin Cox got two pieces of that, brought it to ground. 
Getting no change after a strong tackle from Aaron Joseph as well as we look for some more Mourn Team Ford footy trivia. Who was the last minor premier to win the grand final, Tim? 13, 14, 15 and 16 of your choices there. Norwood West or Sturt. The last minor premier mm, okay. to win the premiership. Here's Leanit around the body. Sun starting to poke through again. Well done. Skills from Ooh. Cox wrapped up by Jesse White from behind. Drags him down, holding the ball. Delayed decision from the umpire. He made the call after the ball had come out. Yeah, spot on with your call there. It's a good tackle. He's been doing a bit of that, Jesse White. Working hard. Here he is across the ground. A dangerous kick for Uber Gang. Marshall. Yeah. Front on front contact. contact. has given away the free kick, but it was worth a punt. Yeah, had to do it. So Uber Gang. Hasn't seen a lot of it, just the five disposals for him. And the other one's Jonty Scharenberg. He averages 22 disposals a game, Scharenberg. He's had five today. They need to find a way to get him into the game. Well, he certainly needs to be more involved as well. Joseph, we took on Frampton. Oh, I don't believe. And he did a good job, Frampton, and ditched him into the turf in the process. So the free kick is going against Frampton here. He just went on with the tackle. He enjoyed it so much. It lingered. Yeah, but this is... This is the maturity and lack of discipline that sometimes creeps in you just can't give those free kicks away the, the tackle was great mate leave it at that maybe say something joseph into attack oh that's a good mark by laddams terrific work by pete had a great game last week really one of the most improved players certainly in this competition and he's now signed a deal to keep him at port adelaide for the next three years at afl level Gould. Cool. Didn't get a free kick. Uber Gang worked his way through the trouble there. The former docker. That's good work there by McKenzie. Able to Look at that out kick. point McBean. And that is a huge a bomb. Mark. And Fair nice mark. take by Prow. Jeez, he's a massive kick. Even the ones that he miscues <laughs> yes. go 60 metres. I think uh, Port Adelaide need to make a contest there. That was a base really good work there. Good smell Sharon Burke just having a dirty day. We'll get back to the Bourne Team Ford footy trivia for Tim Genova. The last minor premier to win the grand final in the Sanford. That's definitely Norwood, and I'm going to say 13. So that'd be eight. There we oh, go. Well done, Timmy. I remember Sturt and West definitely weren't. They played qualifying finals, so I remember that. And I think 14. I'm not sure where the Port finished minor premier in 14. Would have gone close. Well, that's a good question, Tim. 2014, they were. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Got it there. Yeah. We're going to have the blood rule again for Sam Mays. He's been off once and been taped up and changed yeah. his jumper. Probably needs a stitch or two in there. Or a staple. Mm. You see it seeping through on his bandage there. Nothing too dramatic. And Ken, H Ken Hinckley in attendance today, watching the game from the media facilities up in the grandstand. Got a smile on his face throughout this match. Been a lot of positives through this finals campaign for his Magpie Chargers. And uh, we have certainly got a, a lot of confidence going into pre-season. And yes, you were right, Tim. Port Adelaide, minor premiers in 2014, 12 and 6 record. A free kick. Mark, I reckon. Playing the mark, Sam Davidson claimed it. And he says, I've got this under control, gentlemen. I'll go back and just kick the goal. And he's obviously confident in his boot, so I think he can make that distance. And we know he's a very accurate kick at goal, Sam Davidson. Ten goals, two. He's kicked this season. Spent time up on the Gold Coast with the Suns Academy. And bright sunshine. This to make it the biggest lead at any stage in the game. It's been a close day. Davidson, from just outside the paint of 50, good contact, but the accuracy suffers. And across the face of goal, and it's a minor score. Port Adelaide extend the margin now out to nine points. You just, you just get the feeling every kick is, is vital in this game, just being so close. Will Gould, oh, given responsibility to kick out. Johnson going back with the flight, and the free kick's going to go Glenelg's way. Josh Scott broke that arm in round three. It was a horrible break, too. We saw that and had some issues with the little chip off the bone where the plate was put on, and back, obviously, now. He's kicked there, cut off by Atlee. So you can see the rain stopped. The boys handling the ball a whole lot better now. Trengove. 
What a star he was as a kid for Sturt, played in the grand final. Kick from Marshall into 50. Frampton's a target. He's got two Tigers to deal with. Snook, Partington. Two of the midfield guns, but he just blazes away, and Trent McKenzie will get an opportunity to have another crack at it. 22 touches, 18 kicks, and four handballs for McKenzie. Had a great game last week, too. Been very good. 27 disposals, 11 marks last week. would be best player. And Port Adelaide have got this on their terms at the moment. 70 disposals to 42 since half time. They have been holding Glenelg off at arm's length, and the minor premiers have got some work to do here, but still just a nine-point margin. And as we're seeing here, Port Adelaide are quite happy to go east-west at the moment before Lean it drives him up to half forward. Hayes has two to beat and ghosting across. There's the Chris Curran. Well, we know he can deliver. And there was a good block on Mays in between as well. Big body of Uber gang there. And here's Curran. Driving up the line once McBean. Ball's going to drop short, though. And cutting across, Peter Laddams takes them up for Port Adelaide. So they're just breaking down across half forward at the moment, the Bays. As McKenzie goes out wide. Corcoran. His kick over the top. And Jack Strange off and running. Short pass. Now Farrell. Left footer. Looks up into the pocket. Max Proud comes from behind. Oh, but Curran's there again. Play on is the call from the umpire. Jeez. Davidson. Strong tackle from Will Gould. I'd have to see that again, John Casey. I thought that was a magnificent mark. Had plenty of it. Here it is. Let's have a look. Bang. Bang. Gee. Nearly. The play on was the Ooh. call. Sliding now. dangerously there. Yeah. Is Partington. Well, they paid a few of those earlier. That was a dangerous looking one. Farrell gets up. He's okay. Partington. 13 disposals for Partington, so they've quietened him down. He had nine at quarter time, Partington, so he's been largely influential. Sutcliffe. Well, the Sutcliffe for the boundary line came up with a little bit of magic for the Magpies to give him the biggest lead of the game. Sam Hayes just getting a little deft tap down there to Atley. As I said, just a game of inches. Beautiful little give out there to Sutcliffe and kicks a magnificent skipper's goal. The team left it for the Magpies. Now the 15 points, that's a big lead with the conditions. The rain coming and going. Sutcliffe played a handful of AFL games after taking the mid-season draft. 100 plus with Fremantle before he came to Port Adelaide as a development player that oh. was their captain. A little bit of trouble from mark. Partington and here we go. A little it's scramble from Drew. Free kick is going to go Port Adelaide's way and I reckon Atley will be the recipient. been a throw we're well into time on here in the third term two goals to port one to Glenelg Woodcock goes long top of the square big fly came from Cox and there was another fly behind him Johnson. as well Johnson Farrell just took his eye off it at the crucial time looking for a free kick doesn't get it ball off the deck from Sharonberg and Ellsworthy that was tough work too Ellsworthy kept his eye on the ball with Reynolds <laughs> coming at him. Let's have a look at two flies here. So that, that last call, you were right, but him, too many up. Cox had to come front and centre there. Too many up, guys. You, you've got to get that that right. We already had two big guys in the contest. Well, Adams did well. Took it out of the ruck. Got away from Jesse White. Jams it onto the boot. Going back, Max Proud. Two bites at it. Can't complete it. Hayes, the big man trying to find it. Likewise, Curran. Hot footy at the moment and scurrying the kick away. Andrew Bradley. It's high. The ball's going to bounce in the middle of the ground. His Reynolds, oh, deft touch as he got Darcy Bailey involved. He's dragged off it by Strange. No whistle forthcoming. Garner got it from Ellsworthy. Now in turn, Atley. Farrell, good tackle from close. Should've drags gone. him down, and he's holding the ball. Should have should have given that ball off. Needed to be first give. That's a terrific tackle. Disposal number nine hasn't a big day close, and he can bring some X factor. Here's Sharonberg getting involved once more. His kick oh, was too slow for Matty Snook, and Jared Lean it came strongly. That's fantastic, isn't it? He's had a good game. He's a good finals player, we know that, Jared Lean it. And he's just come off the line. Really gutsy effort to get a fist into that. Premiership player with Sturt. And he played a great game, too. He did. He's dad Brett, a hundred plus gamer for the double blues as well. and 
He's a good footballer, Lean, that provides some great options with his height and his ability to run and his long kick as Motlop goes on the outside of the boot and just got touched here. This is a really important moment in the game. A goal for Glenelg here takes him into three-quarter time feeling really good. If Port can transition and get one quickly and be 20-plus up at three-quarter time, they would be feeling very, very confident. McBean, Laddams at it again. Pete Laddams really coming into the game now. Keen to take it out of the ruck and use his clearance work almost as another midfielder, which we've seen a lot this year as Atley going hard. But Laddams just a little proppy. Looks like he might have hurt the right leg a little bit at the moment. Just keep an eye on the way he moves. Motlop coming through. He's done well. Marlon with a little kick. Oh, what a goal. He may have kicked that goal. I think McKenzie got through it. That is a huge goal for Marlon Motlop. Just magical. He's already kicked one this term. Oh, that was unbelievable. It's something out of nothing, which, as you were saying, so to late in the quarter, this would be a really important goal if they could get it. And that was incredible. There was no real daylight here as he's just been able to swing that through. He's got to dodge two Port Adelaide players, and he's done exactly that. A magnificent goal. And that's his second as well. And he's just uh, such a highly skilled player. And he put it on display there. Well, much needed goal for the Tigers. So they cut the margin to nine points in the shadows of three quarter time. And as you can see, well, Adelaide doing a lot of the attacking. With Glenelg with an important goal. And here's White. Well, Adams went without it. White stayed at the ground. A high kick, though. Big contest. And a player's gone down here. And looks like it's Adams. Here's Sharon Burke. Who's lifted his kick going back with a fly to the ball was strange. His Bailey almost tackled without it. Loose ball still in dispute. Squirts out now. Gregson hasn't been big player in the game so far. Snooker the hand pass cut out by Tobin Cox. Now Laddams with it and they get it away from the danger zone. Going back oh, with a fly to the ball. Hey, so Max Proud was in the air then. So play on to advantage is the call here. Also Davidson. Decide to call it back, and there's no one on the mark here for Hayes. He can play on if he wants. Realizes it now. Or well, 25 it is, in fact. So yeah. they've moved the man back. Not a lot on offer in terms of forward, so he just drives for distance at the mm, moment. Three it's on to one. a nest of Tigers. Oh, oh they've got him one another's way. It trickles out the back, and Aiden Johnson thinks it's his birthday. He gets the easy goal, and Port Adelaide extend the margin back to 15 points. Oh dear, that's a really crucial mistake here. Three on one, eyes for the footy. I know Curran always does that. Lukey Reynolds there. This is where your voice has got to come in. A bit of awareness of both players. And to make that blue and Aiden Johnson just a walking goal. You're dead right. It probably thought it was his birthday. It was such a crucial error. Three goals for Johnson. Gee, he's been important today. He's come back into this side. And that is a gift. It was, and uh, yeah, they'll have a look at that one on replay and say, oh, we've got to do that a bit better. Well, they've been really good in defence, Glenn Allen, all going at it. Just the organisation, they let themselves down there. Laddams wants to go again. He is just brooming with confidence. Atley gives it back to Motlop and then decides, oh, I'm going to make up for that mess that I just created. Here we go, Johnson. Atley taken down, not in possession. He's going to get a free kick. Tyron sounds. And it's going to be a super important kick. It's going to be for a long way out. But Gregson, probably yeah. blind and didn't realise that Lee didn't take possession. Yeah, it was unfortunate because Gregson would have had no idea that he didn't still have the ball. So he's committed to the tackle. Just a bit unfortunate. So suddenly, Glenelg were nine points down. If Atley can nail this to be 21 points down at three-quarter time would be heartbreaking. It's going to be a really tough kick, Tim. Yeah, look, it's probably... Distance will be an issue too. Probably just on his distance. Joe Atley from just outside 50. Oh, he's got the distance, but just pulled it going for a little further. So he gets the behind. 16 points to break here at three-quarter time. Final term coming up next on seven.
to we watch just had Rick. someone walk out of our studio audience because <laughs> they've just worked out it's not a pub. <laughs> is that true? Where did it come from? Lethal. First time he got uh, That was Lou Richards uh, Lou when Richards. he was riding for the Herald Sun way back about 71, 72. And, yeah. Bl and Blighty, where did Blighty come from? <laughs> Mate, I'm, I've got to be honest, you didn't have a great game. I'm amazed had... that you found some vision where I didn't play well. I'm just amazed. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night with Hayden Valentine and Martin... Looking here at three-quarter time, and it is Glenelg. Well, they are behind the eight ball. Port Adelaide, 16 points up in, well, conditions that have been a little varied. We've had the rain come down, the sun come out. Trent McKenzie following up his great game from last week. Matty Snook, plenty of the footy as well. Red Biglands on the boundary. Mark, you really had to work hard to hold field position that term. Uh, we've had to work hard all game, really, but I think we won the inside 50 count there. We just couldn't capitalise on our entries. I think a couple went out in the full. We missed a couple of easy shots, and we just didn't handle the ball well at ground level and allowed them to rebound it. So we've just got to do the simple things really well. It's breezy now, and got to put our bodies over the, over the line of the ball and win the ball and surge it forward. What's the final message in this final term? Take them on, back yourselves, create some momentum, create some energy and create some excitement. I mean, 16 points can be picked up pretty quick, but we've got to change the way our energy is at the moment. Yeah, good luck. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. There is Mark Stone. 16 points, you're right, it can change pretty quickly. And, Timmy, just looking at this, Glenelg's contested footy. I know we've looked at this as a thing throughout the game. 126 uncontested possession, 86. Yep. You're minus 40 in that comparison yep. between there. So they're very, own... Yeah, they're very good in close. Yep. And just finding it hard to get enough space to keep the ball off port. Just in contrast, Port Adelaide 107 contested, 137 uncontested. Well, Mark Stone mentioned the inside 50s. They were 13-11 Glenelg's way in that third quarter, but it was 3-3 to 2-1. Port Adelaide has won each of the first three quarters as we get underway here in the final term. Spot in the grand final, up for grabs here. Woodcock harassed. Good work there from Michael Virgin. But the Magpies stay with it. Willem Drew outside of the right boot going back with a flight. Mark's been taken by Andrew Bradley. Had a good game so far. Puts it out a little wider. This is Will Gould. Nice kick for Close, who's up on the charging lead from half forward. Now Scott's calling for it out wide. Gets to it now. Snoop running past. Bradley kept running up to the forward line. He's available, but Scott's looking beyond that. He's looking for Liam McBean, who comes out one-handed. Partington floundered on the deck. He was bustled over trying to get close. Goes off the ground. Just the start the Tigers needed as Brad Close comes up with a finish to kick his first goal. Big contest, just a little toe poke out by Partington. Allowed Close to get the left boot to it. A terrific off-the-ground goal. Gives the Bay some daylight on the National Pharmacy's optical replay. He's got some good speed, Brad Close, making the most of his opportunities. And AFL clubs have inquired about his work. He kicked four goals in a game. That's 12 for the year so far. There he goes again. Close just working with Strange to try and get one off the deck. Just anything to gain some territory. Virgin didn't take possession because he knew that Marshall was coming. Goes a little Wayne Arms off the deck. Partington. Starting to come into it now. Just brought down by Leanit. It's quite clever there. Just trapped it forward into the direction of Strange. Atley gets it from Trengove. Gives it to Farrell. Taken in the air from Trengove. Taken down by Close. Didn't have possession of it. But the umpire said, well, no, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there because it looked like you're about to take possession. Have a look at that in replay. the ball up. Hayes wins the tap. Almost front on contact there against Joe Attlee. It goes unwhistled as he knocked down Andrew Bradley. And here's Gregson getting involved as well. Just a six disposals today for Corey Gregson. We're expecting a little more. Averages 13 a game. So he's been down. Scharenberg not with his normal numbers. So Sutcliffe's had Partington all day and done a, a pretty good job of parting. He's had a couple of touches in his quarter which is Really important for him and the Bays. Sutcliffe has been hard at it 
eight disposals and seven tackles for him. And Partington, 15 disposals, but he had nine of those in the opening quarter. So hasn't had the influence we were expecting. Remember, he carved them up, Partington, when these teams played back in round 14. He was best on ground with 34 disposals and four goals. He had 30 four disposals the first time these two sides met as well so they've done a good job of that this is Frampton to get Port Adelaide forward oh, he misses the mark there Aiden Johnson after he got good separation almost gave away a free kick there his virgin under pressure Marshall into his back Trengove on the deck as well almost four minutes played in this final quarter and it's Port Adelaide by 10 points he kept an eye on Josh Scott in that three-quarter time break as well as getting some work done from the physios of course he's missed so much time this year with the broken armors no doubt he's working on his match fitness spending more time in the goal square but he'd be better for the run Bradley the trend go over the top free kicks can go to Bradley just on Partington you talked about him 34 in both the games they played earlier in the year 15 today 10 of them have been contested so he hasn't got any outside run that's been the theme of how Glenelg has been today. A little bit of speed there, just taking off. Was Gregson going forward. Here's Scott now under pressure from McKenzie. Gives it up. And that's good work from Garner to Farrell and now to Trengove. To Port Adelaide. Gee, Maintaining that. possession. That was Partington putting some pressure on. Really trying to get into the game now. Partington gives it to Bailey. He's a clever player, Bailey. Inside the square, half forward. He's got a lead on from close. He's got a little bit of room to get away from Strange. Under pressure, Drew, Corcoran, and Mark's taken by Johnson. Well, they had their chances there, Glenelg. They didn't make mm. the most of them. Sutcliffe now in the middle of the ground, and he's driving long. Out looking for Frampton, who's got Max Proud right on his hammer, and he's happy to escort it over. Took over five minutes played in the final quarter, but Glenelg had opportunities there. Yeah, that one that Atley turned over, it felt like when he took the mark that he anticipated it was going to be called play on, I reckon, and then he just sort of slipped out a half amble. A boundary throw in front of the old scoreboard here at the Adelaide Oval. Crowd today, 11,406. We had 12,400 for the doubleheader last week. The elimination final, the qualifying final, and 11,500 today in poorer conditions weather-wise. Nicholson with a free kick. Gets it out wide. Gregson knocks him board. Nice pass for Agnew. Got some momentum going at the moment. The Tigers, this is Partington. Oh, neat kick looking for Reynolds, who had to be brave, and he was. They've got numbers over the top. Reynolds, who slow hand passes open the door for the Magpies here. Bailey gets it onwards, and Josh Scott was intelligent to kick it almost out of mid-air for the goal. It's two in a row for the Tigers. Game on. Well, the Bay's coming back at Port Adelaide. Great mark by Reynolds, but his hesitation here just causes this to be a very untidy goal when it could have been really easy. Have a look at poor old Josh Scott again in the wars, but he gets a goal. And the Bay's are well and truly in this game. Only four points in it. Well, they got it done, and they're starting to really take this game on, Glenelg, and get a little bit of outside ball as it's knocked forward. White just goes past on the contest, loses his footing. Lean it. Drew Agnew, great smother on Drew. Lean it back, flicks a little handball towards Woodcock. Bailey, plenty of pressure, makes him cough it up. Strange tries to get it out. This is becoming a red-hot contest. Here we go, Gregson, with a little bit of speed, comes forward through the hands. Here comes Modlop around the corner, and he needs a runner for the fall-in. Port Adelaide's defence held up well. Scott. Free kick for in the back. Free kick is going to go Port Adelaide's way. Gee, this game has gone up a notch. It's been a tough contest all day. Yeah. I think Port Adelaide probably just had that little bit of, you know, that comfortable feeling of 16 points. Well, it's just been eroded. Quick smart. Well, Marshall, high fly. Couldn't complete the mark. Kick from Aaron Joseph was partially smothered. Now it's coming back to Trengo. Slippery ball, though. Took some time to gather. Aaron Joseph in over the top there. So the whistle forthcoming. Marshall involved once more. This handball over the top for Frampton. Jams it onto the boot. Laddams. Good tackle from Uber Gang. The ball dislodged. Bradley. His kick into the middle and Agnew and running past. Here's Will Gould, the teenager, about to be run down. Gets Chase. his kick away just in time. It was disrupted, though, so McKenzie gets back there. Good work from Hewitt as well. 
Reynolds trying to track him back. Got a piece of the arm. Couldn't make the tackle stick, though, and up the ground they move it now. Here's Sam Davidson. He drives, but indiscriminately, mm. and it's going to be out of bounds. So last possession restart here for Chris Curran and the Tigers. He just blindly turned then, uh, John Casey. There was nothing forward uh, where he kicked it to. And the Magpies. Bit of panic. They are just panicked at the moment. And Mark Stone and the Tigers are coming and coming hard. Kick, though. Well read. And the mark's been taken by Sam Hayes. You know, coming into this game with the two highest scoring teams in the competition. Glenelg averaged 92 Ooh. points. And they've got 58 at the moment. Only once this year has Glenelg been kept to under 60 points. And that's when they had the draw with North Adelaide. And that was back in round 16 where they were restricted to 4, 15, 39. In case Glenelg have been very good against Port Adelaide in the two games they played earlier, they've kept them under 60 points for both, 57 and 58. In fact, kicking them to two goals in three quarters in round 14 and three goals in three quarters in round eight. It was the last quarters from Port Adelaide in both those games that gave them some respectability. So Glenelg know Port can come hard. Partington, Scott, and some good work there by Marshall working in defence. Good acceleration speed to get there and just get that piston up. He's a clever footballer, Marshall. Scott mm. just getting a sniff. Missed a lot of footy. We can get Scott, McBean and Reynolds all up and about. And don't forget, they lost Lachlan Hosey to the mid-season draft. They had an embarrassment of riches and tall forwards. Close. Sutcliffe going at it. And the umpire will have to throw it up here. Been consistent all day, trying to give players the opportunity to get the ball out. Hey, spot on, Soda. That's one thing they've been really good with down here, ground level. Not getting sucked into players throwing their heads back or arms up. The umpires have been really strong on making sure the free kicks must be earned. Laddams takes it out of the ruck, spirals it towards centre wing. Max Proud read it brilliantly, takes the mark. He's got runners available in the middle of the ground. Jesse White right at the centre circle where he started the game. He drives for distance. High ball. Port Adelaide with numbers around it. High flyer is Reynolds. Ball brought to ground. Look at them wrap up straight away. Jack Strange set upon by a couple of Tigers. Matty Locken having to have a look, a close look at this at the moment because they were coasting. 16 points in front. Not to have it on their terms, but Glenelg, well, they are coming hard here. Trying to draw a free kick there. Darcy Bailey. Ball springs free. Magpies doing all the defending at the moment. They've got 15, or in fact 14, of their 18 players inside their defensive 50. They put uh, Tom Marshall behind the ball as well. Oh, that's a bad knock. Here's Partington lifting in the occasion. Likes it off the boot. Tigers are back in front for the first time since the second quarter. Just a big punch into the corridor. Luke Partington just waiting on it. And spins it around and kicks a magnificent goal for his team and puts the Tigers in front. They kick three in a row. Port Adelaide yet to score a goal in this last turn. Oh, Partington, terrific. Have a look at the conversions. Three goals straight from nine inside 50s. And this time McKenzie reads it well. And you mentioned, Tim, the Partington had been held pretty well. But this last quarter, the cream is rising to the top in terms of his work. Be one of the favourites for the McGarry medal tomorrow night. You can see that on 7 mate and 8.45 p.m. As a free kick's going to go to Pete Laddams. You expect him to pick up some McGarry votes as well. It's been really noticeable the way he's played this season. Frampton stretches out, can't get it. Gould cleverly, couple of fumbles. The old Jack Cale favourite for your defender, <laughs> Timmy. It's your good friend. Michael Virgin on the lip to Billy Frampton, as we've expected all game. Plenty of fight. And that little dog, Michael Virgin. Billy very happy to come straight back at him. The Bays by two points. Drew and Agnew. Drew gets the kick going forward. One hand coming up from Hayes. Frampton in there. Kick off the deck. Little flick from Laddams was clever. As Sutcliffe goes to kick. Motlop, wonderful smother. Kick from Laddams. At the full. That's the desperation that you need in a final. You want to get there, you've got to do stuff like that. Terrific, Smith. One percenters, Martin and Motlock, putting together a very impressive game. 17 disposals, 10 of those contested. He's kicked two goals. Soda mentioned earlier, he looked as though he was on. The 
Now Will Gould driving Glenelg out of the back pocket. Reynolds the high flyer. Garner slaps it forward, but again, a little indiscriminate with it. Went straight to Bradley. His kick, though, has been marked here by Tom Corcoran. And he threaded the needle there as he found Joe Attlee, who kicks quickly. Wanted at the back, Billy Frampton. He gets there just before, keeps it alive. It's some sort of trick from Billy Frampton. And Marshall puts the icing on the cake. Mampires back on top. Well, some amazing stuff from the big fella, Billy Frampton here. Just one hand bang. He knew he had to try and keep it in. And... Look, the luck's of fortune. There's Marshall. And he quickly nails the goal to put Port back in front. Freakish. Clever from Frampton. Just party trick sort of stuff. Marshall gets his second. Port back in front. What a contest we're enjoying here. Grand final spot for the winner as Drew goes forward. Good and mark. Cohen. How often do you see that? He's had another great year in defence. One of the best marking players in the competition. There's close. Wanted to get things moving quickly. Motlop coming in, just providing some support to give close a little bit of breathing space to be able to take that mark. Kick the goal to start this final term close to get things going. The must, umpire. Must have been touched. Yeah, he knew it was touched there. He just signalled as McCarthy thought he was a chance to get hold of it. Laddams. Getting wide out of the way, but Motlop, first one onto it. Kick going forward. McBean slaps it for Reynolds. Let's see what he can do. He goes to the top of the square. Reynolds' kick. Has he got enough on it? No, it's just been touched on the line. Wow. Ellsworthy, great work. Red Piglin's on the boundary. Uh, some bad news for Port Adelaide. Sam Mays looks to be done for the day. He's in the back of the dugout. Obviously, he had those two head knocks throughout the match where they taped him up and was bleeding from there. He's got the jacket on now, so I'll try and find some more information, but his return is questionable. It doesn't look likely, does it? I saw him speaking with the doctor at three-quarter time, shaking his head. I think that's when the news was delivered that he wasn't fit to continue. And Boyd Woodcock's taken the mark here at centre wing. So almost 17 minutes played. Four goals in this quarter. Three of them kicked by Glenelg. And this Johnson. Been impressive coming back today. He's kicked three goals. Really been a live wire up forward. And he tumbles it forward. And here's Laddams taking the mark. And look at the disappointment from Jesse White. Oh, well, it, it's one of those things we were talking about earlier. When in these conditions, it, when it gets a little bit greasy, a ball might drop short. Or it's just a kick out of a pack. Just make sure you're in front. And that's where Laddams was. And I think that's what Jesse White was disappointed about. He just didn't have front position. Impressive numbers again today for Laddams. 19 disposals. Last week it was 24 disposals, 23 hitouts, and two goals. And he's kicked two goals against Glenelg when they clash back in round 14 as well. 17 goals, five on the season, Laddams. So a reliable conveyance in front of the sticks, but this one just across the face. And through for a minor score. So Glenelg will extend their margin now to 10-9-69. A four-point lead against Glenelg's 10-5-65. 18 minutes played in the final quarter. Seven clearances for Laddams. The only player to have more clearances on the ground is Jesse White. So the two Ruckman, best clearance players for their clubs today. Quick kick from Sutcliffe. Mm. Bailey, he gets a clearance, but only as far as Corcoran, who's had a good game. One of the development players. Well, Top-up players for Port Adelaide, if you like, and goes low and hard. Cut off there by Virgin. Not a lot to kick to here, Soda. He didn't want to go out wide, but he's got no option. He'll have to go out there now. He finds Nicholson. Defensive side of centre wing. Now, close is available, but he's electing to come across ground. And here's Ubergang. Seven disposals for Ubergang. And putting himself about. Now he's surveying his options as well as we approach the 19-minute mark. Magpies by four. They started this quarter leading by 16. Game well and truly up for grabs. A spot in the grand final on the end of it. Here's Scott. Close. Gets involved. Scharenberg. High ball. Didn't get a lot enough on it. Close goes down in the play. No whistle forthcoming. This is Ellsworthy. He drives forward. Joseph, good wrestle there against Tobin Cox. 
Leighton Johnson, the danger man. He's kicked three. Goes back to Cox. Here's Marshall. Wrapped up. Good tackling by the Tigers. But they've still got some work to do. And the ball, was it touched? So the mark's been played to Virgin here. Deep in defence. Probably a few of his teammates were saying one more give, please. Virgin with his second mark in a couple of moments. His first two for the game. White slaps it forward. Curran kicked to Bailey. Didn't. Had two Tigers players, Bailey and Reynolds, ended up giving it to Hewitt, coughed it up. His kick's a good one too, Willem Drew. Said plenty of it today, Drew. 20 touches. 21 coming, 10 tackles to complement those possessions. And the march Cox. taken by Cox. Good hands against his old club. I reckon he almost wasn't going to be in that contest. He had his back to the play at one stage. Watch this. And then he just pushed himself forward. Gee, he's got good hands. Against Curran as well. Yeah. But he hasn't had the best of time in front of the goals in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he kicked 2-5 last week. He's missed one he should have got perhaps a little earlier today. He's got two behinds today. For a player at 179, we talked about this last week, he's got really good hands and mm. can play pretty tall for yeah, very true. what would be a small forward. This is a really important kick. He didn't like the run-up last time. It was a uh, very stop-start. No flow to it. Let's see how it goes this time. Well, we saw last week when he was struggling in front of goal, he took a runner that was probably about 40 metres long. This time, this one isn't anywhere near as far. And this kick is absolutely spot on. They're out by 10 points, the Maggies. We're in the time on. This is a terrific grab. Magnificent hands by... Tobin Cox and he goes back and slots through the goal I'm not sure it kept its shape as it went through but it doesn't matter how it goes through it's what he needed for his confidence and what his, his team and his club needed as well so Glenelg they need to get one quickly here to kick this alive 22 minutes played Partington stood up in the tackle got it to Virgin who spirals it towards centre half forward close man handled out of it comes back for seconds ball hits the deck Nicholson around the body. Good distance with it. McBean leads the charge at the moment. Wrestling against McKenzie. Ball doubles back. And the quick kill there from Tommy Corker. Yeah. He came through like a freight train. Yeah, he's straight line, Tommy. Don't worry about that. But he was much needed because McKenzie was in a bit of a battle with McBean. I think McBean was just about to get hold of him. The crowd are right in this one, guys. 11,406 across semi-final day today, and they are on the edge of their seats this afternoon. Well, the Tigers need a quick one coming. Gould did it well, got it to Partington, who drives from inside the centre square over the top of Leenan, and it skids out of bounds. So last possession restart here for Jared Leenan and Port Adelaide. Mark Stone, the coach of Glenelg. His hands full here at the moment. Not a lot he can do from here. His team just need to be efficient with the ball. 10-6 versus 11-9. There's the Magpies restart. Hayes well positioned oh, here. Played in front. Took a good grab. He's got really good hands, this big fella, hasn't he? He stands at about 203 centimetres or something like that. It's, uh, he's a very tall fella. Got good skills for a big unit too, Sammy Hayes. All-Australian at under-18 level twice as Woodcock. Goes with the outside of the boot. Virgin, that's three marks in a matter of five minutes for Michael Virgin. Setting up another attack forward. Partington's kick. Sharon Berg hasn't had a great day. Slipped at the wrong time. Agnew picks it up, gives it now to Sharon Berg. This could be his moment. He goes long. Two Maggies, one Josh Scott. And it's slapped out by McKenzie. It's uh, a bit of pressure, isn't it? Because uh, normally McKenzie in the form he's in would have marked that. It's, uh, it's what finals do to you. A little bit of pressure. Went for the safety of the line. Three goals to Glenelg, two to Port in this term. 24 and a bit minutes in. Laddam slaps it forward. Glenelg need one now. Motlock conjured up something out of nothing in the third term. He's just lurking on the outside there. Scott... Looked for one, the umpire didn't give it, so we'll get the ball thrown up again in the forward pocket for Glenelg. 10 6, 66, 11 9, 75. Nine points, still anyone's game. Laddams just tries to corral it in front of him. Bailey held on by Sutcliffe. 
He's done a lot of that tight in work, Sutcliffe. 13 tackles for the game. That is uh, Port Adelaide's highest, and along with Agnew, the highest on the ground. Laddams just gets rid of Scott. Agnew, tough and tight. Now by again letting it go, but no chance of it coming out of that. A tick over 25 minutes played in this final term. Shortest quarter we've seen today was the opening quarter. 28-22 is that one. Joined us late a little earlier today. Adelaide Crows by 62 points, knocking Norwood out of the finals race. And they await a loser here. Motlop. Partington dragged off it by Willem Drew. Still no whistle. Hayes getting involved. Jesse White also coming across Kane Farrell. Free kick going the way of the Magpies for a high tackle as we go to Red Biglands. Well, not more good news for Glenel. We're looking at Liam McBean on the bench there. Has the ice on the left hamstring. So he hasn't spoken to a physio as yet or any treatment on that hamstring. But uh, I'll try and find out some more information. That yeah. could be a huge blow heading into either next week or next fortnight. Well, I wonder if that was that last contest with McKenzie. That's the last time we saw him. It must have been. We'll have a look and see if we can find that. White works his way to the front. Laddams knocks it down. Sutcliffe and Partington. Sutcliffe now taking the front position. Partington takes it out. Good little land ball. Gives it to Bradley, the former skipper. Couple of quick steps. Gets the kick up. They need something. Reynolds! The umpire's played it. He's got it. It was a big go at it. And Monlock takes it and goes. But I think the mark's taken by Reynolds. He's got to bring it back. Just as they needed something. Have a look at him. Big fly over the top of Garner, Tim. Well, I'll tell you what. There's probably not a lot of time left. So this was absolutely vital for him and the team's opportunity to get in the grand final. Luke Reynolds, just a one point so far today from right on 50. He needs it to go all the way. And he's kicked it. So they're within three points now, Glenelg. They're a kick away from getting themselves into a grand final. Matty Lockett on the phone. And Reynolds stands up at just the time they need. It's a fair grab, isn't it? Coming over the back. And then the kick. Had to hold its line. You know, it's been a long day. You've got to... Make sure you can still convert. And Luke Reynolds has been able to do that for the Tigers. And they stay alive in this contest. Looks composed, Mark Stone, doesn't he? I reckon it might be like the duck with the feet under the water, though. And another great advertisement of why you need a count up clock rather than count down. We don't know how long there is to go. Port Adelaide going forward, taking the mark. Cox, oh, no, no, no. play on. That's Umpire mark. says play on. That's a terrible decision. Agnew dragged down, almost slammed into the deck by Joe Attlee. The umpire comes in and says, I'll have it. Just watch his hands. That's all cops. That's Mark. Yeah, that's, that's a howler. 28 minutes played. Straight kick the difference here. Well, straight kick would win it, in fact, for Glenelg. They're down by three points. Cox gets it across. Kick came there from Willem Drew. Hayes. Working against, almost getting to the back of Max Proud. And Curran slides across the line. So the margin is four points, but Glenelg can restart. And they run it forward. <laughs> well, the torpedo, though, was off the side of the boot. Mark taken by Farrell, and they'll slow it down. He says, I'm having a shot. I'm not sure about that one, Soda. Um, I, I, oh, there's the siren, too. So you'll have a shot, but it won't matter. It's just going to let it bounce and go wherever. But... Port Adelaide have got into the grand final with a four-point victory, an absolute nail-biter, an incredible contest here between Port and Glenelg, and Glenelg will get to live another day. They'll go back through the preliminary final against the Adelaide Crows, and Port Adelaide will go into the 2019 grand final. Live that life.
grand final. They couldn't get it done against Norwood. They couldn't get it done against Sturt recently. They're going to have another chance. Let's head down now to Red Big Ones. Uh, Trink, Mackenzie, congratulations through to a grand final. What a game. And certainly intense right from the start. Yeah, amazing feeling, mate. Um, well, two of the top sides going at it. They come at us. We kicked a couple of goals. They kicked one back. I was neck and neck all the way, but yeah, it's good, good to get the win. Down back, you've got some pretty tough challenges down there. McBean, Reynolds and the like. How'd you go up against the tall timber? Yeah, no, it was, it was obviously a tough game. They got some serious forwards up there, so we'll be, we'll be ready again if, if we happen to meet him in the grand final, but um, yeah, all credit to them. They kept going. You've got Jared Lena alongside of you. Obviously a premiership player, provides a lot of stability and helps you out down back, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Uh, we're a pretty young side down there, so any experience we can get, it's definitely definitely helps, but um, yeah, he's, he's been there, so hopefully he can you know, guide those young boys into the next next group next week. So, and what a year for yourself uh, playing against Fremantle in the last round, then to play the final series here. It'd be good to cap it all off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it'll be nice to get a win, but we'll we'll have a uh, rest week off and yeah, hopefully go again. Well done, mate. Go and enjoy it. Thanks, mate. Trent McKenzie's had a great fortnight and Port Adelaide will have a chance to win their first premiership since 1999 in a fortnight's time. We'll wrap it up after the break right here on 7. Port Adelaide, four-point winners in the second semi-final against a very brave Grinnell. Absolute ecstasy of the Port Adelaide Football Club, the Magpies. They are into the 2019 Sample State League Grand Final. It was a terrific performance. They held off Glenelg, and Glenelg came home hard. They were 16 points down at three-quarter time. Glenelg, they kicked four goals to two in the last term. They just could not get it in the end, and Reynolds kicked the goal late, but Port Adelaide, they got their terrific performance. Trent McKenzie... He has had two great finals so far. Jared Lean had set the scene again early from the start. He's becoming a really important Sandville finals player. Luke Partington came into the game after being held out, and uh, he really was pretty impressive for Glenelg. And Timmy G, when you look across the board there, well, the contested possession, Port Adelaide won, but uncontested possession... Port Adelaide on the outside were very good. Yeah, look, they were, but, gee, what a final it was. That was exactly what you want. It's tough, it's hard, you have to earn it. Nearly every ball was earned, wasn't it, by both uh, teams. And I thought it was a terrifically fought-out final. We had a great ruck battle. You see Peter Laddams there, 38, heading into the room. So he went up against Jesse White, and that was a great contest as well. It was. It was excellent. And we knew that that would be pretty key to the to the result. And I thought they were both really good. Jesse White had a, a monster of a game. He just kept on trying for his team. And, and Peter Laddams, well, we just know he's such a vital cog in this team. Well, a little earlier today, the Crows got up by 62 points against Norwood in the first semi. So Crows will take on Glenelg next week with the winner having the right to take on this red-hot Port Adelaide side. And they are just absolutely pumped. Yeah, well, they're in the circle and they're just about to uh, get into the song and I think they'll sing with a bit of gusto. It's a wonderful moment when you know you're into a grand final, Timmy, whether you've won the prelim or you've won the second semi. You've been there before, and those boys right now are just on absolute cloud nine. Yeah, look, they're pretty pumped because they earned it. They absolutely earned it. It was a really tough fought battle. I mean, Port Adelaide had a 16-point lead at three-quarter time, and the Bays just wiped it out within a very quick time. They kicked the first three goals of the quarter, and they hit the front. So I thought it was pretty impressive stuff. And then for Luke Reynolds to come back and kick that late goal to keep him alive was just uh, paramount, I think, for what the Bays are now and the way they go about their football. Yeah, it was a terrific performance there, Timmy. Our attention, of course, turns to tomorrow night because we have the McGarry Medal on, also with the SA Football Hall of Fame. Three greats will be inducted into that Hall of Fame, and it's 8.45 on 7, mate. But tell us, McGarry-wise, uh, what's in your thinking? Oh, look, um, Paddy Wilson, I think, from the Adelaide mm. Football Club's had a pretty good year with Paholke. I think they'll poll well there. I think Luke Partington, um, maybe Snook as well, uh, get a few votes for, mm. for the Bays. Uh, for Port Adelaide, you know, Tringo did have a big yep. start, but he did miss a few games with injury. 
injury, so that that may cost him a, a little bit as well. But uh, and then you've got your usuals from Nord in Panos and, and Grig and these guys that poll well. So and and Kirkwood and Battersby from Sturt. So yeah, there's lots of, lots of names. Louis Johnson from Norwood, of course, too had a, had a, a wonderful year. season. Uh, Three, he was Don in the Barry. top three in terms of uh, possessions as well. Don Barry as well had his mm. moments as well. Next week, of course, well, this will be a huge clash. Can Glenelg bounce back after that heartache there in the Adelaide Footy Club? Well, what a performance by them in that first semi. 62 points. They were all over the Norwood Football Club. So that is going to be an absolute cracker. That is next Sunday from 3 p.m. But tomorrow night, we will be with you on 7, mate for the McGarry Medal and SA Football Hall of Fame. Thanks for joining us, Timmy. It's a Thank big you. game and you're smiling because your boys Port Adelaide are into another Sandful Grand Final. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, we'll see how we go this time. Have more one since 99. <laughs> it's been a long time. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week. We'll see you tomorrow night at the McGarry.